All right, good afternoon. I want to call the uh, August 22nd, 2019 meeting of the Blackman's Parish Council to order uh, at 1.20 p.m. Machines open for roll call. Let the record reflect that all nine council members are present. Uh, we have no executive session. Um, I'll tell you what, let's uh, clean the agenda. QN, please, if you have any... Uh, Items to defer or withdraw, please. <coughs> Mr. Albro. Yes, um, 9A3 withdraw and 9A4 withdraw. Mr. Kognovich. Uh, 9D and uh, the District 9 update. That's deferred, deferred or withdrawn? Deferred. Deferred D as well? Yeah. Okay. D &D. Mr. Bartholomew? 10A2, at the recommendation of the training, on withdraw it. That's all, sir? That's all, sir. Mr. Roussel? At this time, I'd like to defer item. 10 E2, E1, excuse me. And then uh, when the chair sees fit to move to item 10 E2. Okay, we'll move up for it. And we've got some people in the audience on that one. So. All right, let me go back through it real quick. Um, items 9 A, 3 and 4 of the drawing. 9D is deferred, 10-2 is withdrawn, 10C is deferred, 10E1 is also deferred. All right, Ms. Morcott, let's move to the proclamation. A proclamation declaring August 22, 2019 as Wounded War Heroes Day in the Parish of Plaquemines. Mr. Kognovich. I'll offer. I'll offer an extra unanimous second. Do you have any objections to unanimous second? All right, with none, we have a unanimous second. A proclamation declaring August 22, 2019 as Wounded War Heroes Day in the Parish of Plaquemines, whereas America is known as the land of the free and the brave. It is because of men and women have dedicated their lives to protecting that freedom for all citizens of our great country. And whereas the men and women of the armed services and their families have sacrificed so much for our country, and many have sustained life-altering wounds, while others have given the greatest sacrifice for the fight of freedom. And whereas we owe so much to these courageous men and women who have been wounded in combat and suffered physical losses while defending those who cannot defend themselves. And whereas today we take time to honor the wounded war heroes whose dedication to each and every one of us has never wavered, and we thank you for your service. Now therefore, be it proclaimed by the Plaquemines Parish Council represented by its duly authorized chairman, William Bo Black, and by concurrence of the parish president, Kirk M. Lapine, representing the parish Plaquemines government, Plaquemines parish government, that it hereby declares August 22, 2019 as Wounded War Heroes Day in the parish of Plaquemines. Thank you, Mr. Kajovic. You want to move for a vote? Yes. All right. I'll second. Machine's open for a vote. Council Member Bartholomew. Proclamation passes 9 0. Mr. Kajdovich. In Venice. If you'd like to come up. Show sure, podium's open, sir. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Terry Ronquillo. I'm on the executive board of the Wounded War Heroes. Appreciate y'all doing this for us to uh, recognize these these men and women that, that fought so hard for us. And uh, I'd like to extend an invitation to to the whole council to uh, come down either tomorrow night or Saturday and uh, just, just uh, see what the what our organization does for these guys. Uh, you know, we're proud to uh, be able to take care of these people. And uh, one of our biggest uh, accomplishments is we uh, give back over 98 and a half percent of all monies raised directly to the veterans. 
We've had uh, some of the uh, VA social workers and all tell us that we are now considered an outdoor therapy for the veterans. Great. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Ronquillo. Any questions or comments from the, from the table? Mr. Roussel. Yeah, I just want to thank you for all the uh, effort that y'all put into this event, and I hope that it's very successful, and I believe that the, uh, the wounded warriors are well deserving of that. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Mr. Karnovich. I'd like to thank you all, too. I know it's a lot of work to put on one of these things, and I appreciate you all doing it for the service people. Mr. Lapine. Terry, uh, on behalf of the administration, thank you for everything you do. Uh, I will bring the, pro I can either give you the proclamation, I'll bring it down tomorrow and read it when we, uh, it's yeah. up to you, but. Um, I would prefer, you know, y'all want somebody. Yeah, the, I'll, I'll be there. To come down and, and, you know, be a part of this with us. I'll be there tomorrow evening, reading it out. Okay. Thank okay. You. So thank you. We'll take a photograph with, uh, uh, you want to do it and do that now or tomorrow night? Which one do? to do? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, all right. The other one's a little more to do something doing it like that. But, uh, worked good last time, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Don't do it. Okay. Let you go first. All right here. All right. On three, one. Oh, let's wait for Mr. Bellamy. All right. Ready? On three, one, two. Three. I'm going to do another one. Three, one, two, three. Y'all sit tight. One more. Go in. Three, two, one. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, at this time, there's a question, Mr. Russo. Uh, we're going to move to item 10, uh, 10E2. Um, discussion of business operations of the landscaping business on the corner of L Street and Highway 23. Mr. Russo. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've distributed a couple of photos that were taken Monday of the site that we're going to talk about in a few minutes, and I've received uh, a great deal of heartache about the residents living there with this situation. And it began with the, uh, the dumpster that was placed on the highway with vulgar language on it. From that day forward, uh, we've had nothing but complaints. Uh, the pictures speak for themselves. The, the residents can speak for themselves. They're in the audience now. And uh, I know that uh, Mr. Lapine's administration has been trying to address this, and I'm sure he'll have some comments on it as well. But uh, I don't know if... Uh, we need to impose new legislation to correct this problem, or if there's enough legislation on the books to address it. But if uh, you lived on that street, you wouldn't want to have to come home every day and go through the misery that the individuals are doing. And what makes the matter worse, if you go to the other end of the street, the parish has a project there that uh, has been shut down for seven months that doesn't make living on that street very pleasurable. And I'm hoping that uh, that drainage project will be moving forward and completed eventually. But you've got to realize that the people that are trapped in between these two nightmares has got to be addressed. So I put that out there, and I can open it up for discussion. Mr. Lapine, if you'd like to address uh, the complaints. And we have individuals in the audience that would also like to make some comments, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Russo. Uh, we are aware of the issue. Uh, it's been turned over to the health department. Uh, my, code, my 
superintendent of the health department is here to explain the process of what we've done so far and where we're headed. So I'd like to bring him up, Mr. Raymond Ferreira, and give us a, a brief synopsis of what we have done so far and what we plan to do. Good afternoon, Raymond Ferrer with the Health Department. Uh, we have been receiving these complaints. Um, uh, we did issue a notice of violation uh, in late July. Um, we gave an opportunity for uh, both the occupant and the owner to uh, remedy the situations and we described both uh, the issues with um, the dumpsters not being maintained or emptied out on a, uh, a timely basis. Um, our next step at this point is to issue a letter for them to appear at an abatement hearing. Um, I'm aware that sometimes time it takes a bit too long for these abatements to occur, but the local law says that uh, we need about 30 days from the date of that letter to be written before an abatement hearing is held. Uh, so we're looking for, uh, honestly, we're looking at a few more weeks before we hold that abatement hearing. But we are aware of it and we are sending inspectors out. We've been talking to the occupant, uh, the operator, and we have been talking to the landowner about the, the fencing issues that it's required and uh, the dumpster issues. That's where we're at so far. All right, thank you for that. Uh, now I guess we'll open the floor for the residents. Uh, Dr. Gould? And I know this is so frustrating for you, frustrating for the administration, but, and I don't have an answer for it, but it seems to me, all the years I've been at this, in this chair, that the people who are doing the violating, it looks like they have more rights than the people who are being violated. And if there's any way we can ramp up our system to turn that table, if we can do that legally, I think that would be an asset for living in Plaquemines Parish. Um, do you agree that the per persons who are doing the violating seem to have more rights and get away with more things than the people who are being violated? One of our challenges is addressing these folks or these land operators that have junk or debris, uh, withstanding grass, because we could actually jump on the grass issues pretty quickly. It's the stuff that has debris on it and uh, one of our challenges is actually going on that property and removing things um, and I think we need to address that um, from an ordinance standpoint whether it be just um, and giving it more teeth uh, better language uh, for us for us as an enforcement agency to follow well as an enforcement agency you know we would look to your guidance mm -hmm because the frustrations you're dealing with, what are the solutions? And, you know, it's, it's my hope that you will uh, work with uh, legal and with the uh, uh, president to come up with some suggestions, and I'd be more than anyone of us up here would be ha more than happy to introduce that I'm if we can do it. glad you stated that because uh, we do have a draft in place. Um, it's just a matter of us sitting together, reviewing that draft like we did with uh, the animal control ordinances and reviewing it. Uh, agreeing on it and making it happen. Well, I appreciate that. I know the residents of our parish will, uh, really appreciate that also. I'm done. Thank you. Ms. Newbar. Is this a matter of correcting a zoning problem? I mean... For this particular L Street issue, um, maybe so. Um, I, th I know for commercial properties, it does have to be there's required fencing for it. I believe it has to be seven feet high. And I think uh, because this is a corner uh, lot, I'm not sure if the entire thing could be fenced. Uh, so we don't want to block um, oncoming traffic as people enter or leave L Street. Mr. Russo. Uh, does that conclude the remarks? Oh, yes, sorry. Mr. Blank. Yep. Mr. Blank. Does the property have a history of being in violation? No, this is the first that we are aware of. Just, just for the record, the property has been vacant for many years. It used to be a used car lot, and this uh, 
business moved from North Concord Road to this location. We did have compl uh, complaints on North Concord Road when the business was located there, and now we have complaints on L Street and Highway 23 when the business has been relocated to this location. That's all? Yes, sir. This time I'd like to open up the floor to, uh, or ask the chairman to open up the floor to the constituents that would like to make comments. Just on state your name and your address, please. I'm Patty Madison. I'm the land owner. Okay. This young man here, Mr. Fer Mr. Farrah, Ray. J um, Raymond, knows good and well that I've applied for a permit for a fence. I just talked to the man not long ago. That is being taken care of. I have, do not have the permit in my hand yet. So I have not been able to start a fence, but I will. That has already been told to him, and it's been told to the health department. So they know. It's not like we've been sitting on our asses doing nothing. Ms. Madison, let me ask you this question. Um, the fence that you've applied for, what does it cover? It covers along the back, uh, between the house, the 106 house, and the end of the... Um, the lot there, the commercial lot. And nothing up either side or the front? I can't put anything up side. If I do, I will be blocking traffic from the front. The people going in and out of L Street won't be able to see. If you go that high. Um, I, I've spoken with... Uh, well, I have to go seven feet. I understand. That's the law. I spoke with your tenant many times uh, trying to resolve this issue. And, yes. Uh, Evidently, you and him have come to some conclusion as to how much fencing you will put up and you will put up a fence. Yeah. Have you uh, had any uh, conversation with him on maintenance of the property itself? I mean, if you look at these photos, there's a dumpster there, and there's as much debris on the side of the dumpster as there is in the dumpster. And to be able to, uh, to maintain some semblance of uh, appearance, you know, for the residents that have to drive by there with the parking in the street, the unloading of materials, and the people in their safety trying to get to Highway 23, uh, it has caused a serious problem. Uh, I pass there in the morning, and sometimes I wonder if ICE is there or not. And I think they perhaps, uh, you know, should visit it. So having said all of that, I'm going to yield to the residents to, uh, and you, your final comments if you have any. Like I said, we have started with the permit. That's our first step. And that should, as far as I'm concerned, resolve the problem. I am sorry about the, the vulgar language. I don't know anything about that. I didn't see any vulgar language. So if it was on there, it didn't stay very long. So I must have taken it off. <clears throat> I apologize for that. Well, I think more so than the vulgar language, now we're dealing with just uh, the way that the operation is overflowing into the street and impeding the residents. As of so this morning, Benny, that that uh, container that you're speaking of was empty. The trash on the side of it is going to be put in that container. I spoke with Ross earlier today. He's the one who told me about this meeting. I had no idea this was on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I should have been notified. I notified the, uh, the occupant, and sorry if you didn't get the notification. So Ross knows about it. He indicated that he couldn't attend about an hour or two ago? Yes, he has a doctor's appointment. And so, uh, you know, that is what it is, and I hope that we can find a, uh, a good solution to it. Uh, I wouldn't want to drive past it every day looking like it looks today, though. As I said, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm putting a fence up. It, I understand. Uh, the only problem with that, the fence is in the back, and yes. we'll still look at everything in the front. He's either going to uh, have to move that I asked him to move that, that uh, dumpster back to the back of the property. And he said he will, but he has to wait for the yard to dry or else he will end up with big ruts in the yard. So well, if they I'm not if y'all can just be patient, yeah. we're working on it. I can't do everything overnight. I understand. I'm not going to debate the issue about the ruts, but, I mean, they're in and out of there with trucks 
daily. So yeah, on the shell part. Uh, he's in business. He's in the <laughs> landscape and, and and lawn care business. He worked regularly, even on Saturday and Sunday. He's got operation going on. Now the dumps are being monitored and dumped by a contractor, and he so but he's constantly bringing more stuff in. That's to keep his business going. But I got a question though. Uh, some of the highway to my house, which is 108 L Creek. All that is considered commercial. Why am I got to put a fence in the between my commercial property, right in the middle of it? I'm trying to sell the property, and they can't. You know, some they see a fence that they don't know that there's a whole, a whole, all of it together. Well, my personal opinion is is that the fence you're putting up there is a waste of time and money, because it's not going to do anything for the residents that drive past it in the front and on the side. But having said that. You know, I'm not sure what the answer is as far as fencing. That, that fence is of no means to me to solve this problem. The problem that I see is the way that the place is being operated. It's not being operated in a manner that would justify a landscaping business. It's dump, it looks to me more like a landscaping dump. And that's the problem that has been brought to me. And I'm going to let the, you know, the citizens that have raised the issue make their comments and I'll uh, yield the floor to them, and I appreciate your effort, but that something has to be done uh, to try to improve the situation. The fence, in my opinion, is not the answer if it's going to be across the back. Because you, well, you, What do you want me to do, Benny? I would like to see the, the operator of the facility maintain the facility in a neat and clean manner. Such as? Such as not putting all of the pallets all over the place. Most not of the having, pallets are going there. Not having all of the workers block up the street in the mornings before they go out to the jobs. And I, without me saying any more, I'd let the residents to say what they would like to say. I don't live there, but I drive past there three, four, five times a day. And I, I, I feel sorry for the individuals who live in the block. Because like I mentioned in the beginning of this conversation, they got to pass that. And if they happen to go down to good news, they have to pass that drainage situation, that project that's been sitting idle for seven months with the grass six yeah. feet high, the drag line sitting there. And it's just not a good living environment that the people have become to be involved in because of not their uh, actions, other actions. So I'm going to yield, and uh, I don't know what else to tell you other than trying to manage the, the operator to make it a little bit better off. Ms. Newbauer. Ms. Madison, um, yes. if, you, if you go down or up through Gretna Highway 23, they do have landscaping companies, and they can actually beautify the property. Um, that's what sells your products, you know. Um, but that's up to Ross. Yeah, but you also own the property, and you can set your own policies, just like we set our policies. So um, as a renter, and he's interested in the in the, in the the property of renting it from you, you can set your own policies. So maybe a little beautification on the property could help a little bit. Just a suggestion. Well, he is picking up things. He has done some work. Okay. Now, I can't. Uh, I want to make a comment about the palace. The palace was lined up on the back of the property, but he was told to by the parish that he could use that as a fencing. So that's why the palace was all lined up there. <coughs> so he was told now that he got to take the palace. So he did talk, take, took the palace out. But well, I would just say that he was misinformed yeah. if he was told that. Yeah. That, that would be my opinion, and that's all it's worth is my opinion. Dr. Gouy. Let's go back to the fence. Standing regarding a fence is it's uh, a separating medium between business and residential. On the back of a piece of property. Is that how it's written? Written. Go ahead, Mike. I did. There we go. There are some regulations in the zoning ordinance that require fences for separations. <coughs> 
excuse me, between certain zoning classifications, but it might be more important to mention for the purposes of this property, I issued and signed a, a fence permit for this particular property uh, earlier this week. So there has been a fence permit issued uh, for this property, so I don't know. Now, listening to Councilman Roussel, I don't know if it's it's going to give any immediate relief, but then again, uh, hopefully it, it, it could form some type of a aesthetic barrier uh, between the property and the, and the community and the rear of the property. Well, the point is it's not a fence that needs to go around the entire property. It's the fence that would separate from a residential to commercial. But in this situation, the commercial property even goes back another lot. Is that true? To your to your lot, I mean, you, yeah. So the fence, to me, that would be a, a subjective thing whether you put the fence there. Well, I don't think there's any prohibition against them fencing in the entire property, and just so long they don't cause side of, of obscuring obstructions for traffic. That might be a something that could be useful as well. I don't I know, have, but I have to agree with Mr. Russell. <laughs> what good is that going to do? If the fence is really not required, the requirement has to, happens to be another lot back. I mean, is that how you, you're thinking this? Are you reading this as to where the fence needs to go? Well, that was one yeah. thing, too. Uh, as we own everything from the highway back, the rental house, and then our home behind that, uh -oh. our, ho our home is not on commercial. I'm but the house we rent out is right. zoning director, which is the one right directly, directly behind mm -hmm. where the landscape business is. That's and, what and, this particular and so to put up a fence part. along there, you know, like you said, it is separating the commercial property. But, but the point I'm making is that whether you put the fence in front of the house or on the property line of the commercial behind the house, it doesn't really address the problem. Exactly. Understand? Okay. I see what you're saying, Benny, and and he knows that. Ross knows that, and he is doing better with it. There's not nearly as many of the uh, pallets out there as there was when I first got that letter. Okay, he got rid of a lot of it, but it comes in daily, and he's he's gets rid of them. It may not go out fast enough to, to please everybody. I'm sorry about that. But the man does have a business to run. And he's trying to do it to satisfy people. And, you know, some people just aren't satisfied. And, and I can understand why. Well, I understand their point, too. But I also understand my tenant. You know, he's trying to, to earn a living. And uh, he gets flack from every which direction. He doesn't yeah. have a little landscape business. He's got like 30 employees working for him on this. So he covers the area from here to Baton Rouge. They've done a lot of, hell of a lot of business. And as far as the traffic in the morning, I personally, I don't get up that early, so I don't see it. But I do know that we have blockages in the road at different times, especially on weekends, where there are parties going on and both sides of the roads are blocked. Barely enough room if an ambulance can get through there. And, you know, that's not, so his, his business don't keep it blocked up that long. They're just getting lined up to go off for the day. To get out as soon as they can. Mr. Albro. Uh, yes, uh, so I, I, my subdivision, I, we was joking about how this is not my district, but I am, uh, my street is right behind us, so I drive this street several times a day, and, and I concur with, uh, Councilman Roussel, that I, <clears throat> with both projects going on, it, it is, uh, you know, not the most desirable street to live on right now. Me personally, I take a left and go up Barry Road or right and go up whichever street that is most mornings because of the traffic issue and now that that project has ramped back up. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's my opinion, and, and I, I, I've been trying to get some things together, been working on it, but I mean, at the end of the day, we're picking on a business, and uh, there might be some violations. There might not be some. We have other businesses in Plaquemines Parish that might not look as bad, and we got some, you know, as you go down the highway that might look worse. So, 
Raymond, I would love to sit down and help administration, please. I think this is a perfect opportunity for us, us to set the standard of what we want our businesses on Highway 23 to look like, put the proper codes in place and enforce them. Um, but to pick on a business and, and, again, is he in violation of what codes and what are we picking on? You know, at the end of the day, Thank let's you, set the policy, let's set a correct policy in this parish and, and enforce it going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Cogger. Right, I'm, I'm finished. Thank you. Can anybody tell me if he's got an occupational license to work in this yes, parish? Does. <laughs> he's done work for this parish. I want y'all to know. He has voluntarily donated his time and his efforts and his materials to work on that field back there for the kids to play ball on. Cost the parish nothing. Mr. Blank. Well, we certainly appreciate the individual going back to work on the ball fields um, very much. But, you know, just looking at these photos, and I wish these could be up on the screen, you know, just for future reference for my colleagues here. It helps the folks out in the, uh, in the audience kind of get clued in. Um, you know, what we're seeing here is, you know, vehicles kind of parked uh, frontwards, uh, backwards. Uh, it's a landscaping business, but there's grass growing over the, the cracks. Uh, I'm sorry, growing over the curb. There's some grass, there's some shells, there's a building without skin, there's a building with a plywood door on the front of it, there's heavy or light heavy equipment like bobcats and little smaller skid steers just kind of randomly a strew, a dumpster overflowing, um, uh, a big sign that doesn't have the actual sign on there but there's the framing. Um, just, just some simple things that don't even cost much money like just backing all the vehicles in putting them in a neat order, um, skinning the building, maybe hanging a real door on it, you know, just some basic stuff. You know, if they're a landscaping business, they could, you know, pass the edger and then Can hang up a... Benches? Yeah, sure, certainly. And hang up a nice sign. It might uh, actually... Hey, hey, there you go. Hold on a second. Oh, Ms. Madison. Ms. Madison, hang... <clears throat> anyway. But in, anyway, it might work out well for everybody. Thank you. It might wor work out well for everybody if just, you know, just a little bit of care is taken, you know, where we don't have to even get involved. Um, and I, I think it might even drive some business his way if he's, you know, taking well, well good care. I'm looking at this photo and all I see that looks bad to me is the overflowing dumpster. That may have been the week he said that guy's truck broke down and he was late in coming to pick it up. This photograph I took personally Monday. But, there, you know, there's some jet skis there and it's just, it's just, it's just kind of random. And it just looks like people kind of haphazardly left stuff there. and. It, and, you know, meanwhile, the, the next door neighbor is, you know, Edward Jones is a financial services company. There's a nice yeah. coffee shop right next door. It just, it's out of place with the neighborhood. But that's all I have, y'all. Thanks. Just, just a little personal responsibility. Clean up. This property was in place before that coffee shop was there. Here, y'all can have this back. Thank you. All right. Anyone else from the audience would like to come up and? Uh, good afternoon. My name is Victoria Wedge. I live on L Street. And what happens is that these guys, when they work, they come at the end of the day and they just drop their stuff. Uh, there's no organization. There's trash all over the place. As of right now, they said that, you know, they emptied the dumpster. There's trash all over the dumpster. Somebody's supposed to put it in? Well, you'd think they would do it then. Um, I understand that it's a commercial uh, lot. We have a business that's been in business right across the street for as long as I've been living there, the auto shop, Delta Tires, and they seem to do an excellent job in having a fence, putting their vehicles behind the fence when the day is done. On the weekend, there are no cars in the parking lot. Okay, it's clean. Uh, so I'm accustomed to having a business on my street and not having any problems. This problem happened when all of a sudden there's trash flowing over this huge dumpster. Okay, we're not talking about a little dumpster. This is a huge, you know, 
dumpster. And so I'm going to have to look at this thing constantly being filled to the brim. And um, I, I would love a fence, but I also would love the fact that these people be responsible. You know, everybody should be appalled by this driving down the highway. It's, it's, you know, it's that bad. It's, and, um, you know, I'm sure these guys are tired at the end of the day, but it's the responsibility of the owner to make sure this stuff is where it belongs. And they haven't done it. I haven't seen it. And supposedly if they were cited, that didn't scam too much because it's still a mess. So um, I hope we can do something about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Lawrence Willie, L Street, a rock throw from what we're talking about. I occupied that property for dang on you 20 years as a used car lot. Lots of people in here might even know me. That property was maintained in a business-like manner with the proper, um, what would you call it, uh, frontage. No one ever had a complaint in 20 years except the owner complained one time that I didn't cut the grass enough. That's it. Now we have the ugliest place, believe me, I drive the highway. That's the ugliest spot on a whole highway. It's a blemish on Bell Chase. It shouldn't be st stood for. You guys have the power. You let them have it, you can take it back. Thank you, Mr. Willie. Warren Lawrence, uh, don't leave on L Street. But uh, I just have to make a comment is that, yes, y'all need some regulations to draw up to make it different. They say the ugliest place on Highway 23, no way. When you drive in the base off of Highway 23, look to your left and tell me we need something to clean up that place. And this is not a place that's just starting in business. This is a disgrace to the whole parish. I don't know what audience would do it. You definitely need something. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments from the audience? Mr. Russo? Uh, I'm hoping that the administration will uh, uh, come up with uh, some recommendations if it's legislation that's needed, if not uh, some enforcement that is going to be implemented. Uh, as you can see, the residents are not happy, and I don't think that uh, anybody up here would want to be in a situation that these residents are in. So I ask that, uh, that we move forward with some type of uh, implementation. One more thing, if I might. The problem here is not the trash. The problem here is the mindset. That's okay with those people. It's not okay with you or you or any of you. You wouldn't want it in your neighborhood. Why is it okay for me? I've got property that has been depreciated money-wise just for that thing being within a certain parameter of my property. If I wanted to sell in the near future, I'd take a loss just because of that. So they're costing me money. Thank you, Mr. Willie. Thank you. And for the comments, Mr. Rousseau? Uh, I think I've said about enough as I could say. I encourage anybody that drives past to look over there and see if you would want that next to your house. All right, thank you. All right, um, let's move to item 4A, 1 and 2, please. Uh, Mr. Lapine. Uh, I have no status report. And um, I think my directors updated everyone yesterday. So. All right, any questions or comments from the table? Yes. Mr. France. <clears throat> I would like to... Uh, Get a copy of Infomark uh, last contract uh, and pass it out to uh, email it or, or give us a copy. Okay, get it to you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Newbar. Yes, uh, Mr. Halmer had sent everyone an update, and I've been following through with it. Last month, he has um, just want to put it out there that he has saved the parish almost seventy-five thousand dollars. 
um, on, um, what do you call it, Bo, um, I, IT service. Um, and now he's even saved the parish another $8,000 this month. So he's almost at $83,000 a month saving the parish. So I just want to let the people know that John Helmer is doing his job and is very appreciative. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Blank. Sure, I have some comments that sent around uh, an introduction, but I feel like I need to make them here and not at introduction time. Um, there's a, an introduction for a uh, subsurface right-of-way for a directional drilling outfit to do some work in Buras. I have a long-standing uh, drainage request in the area, and I feel that the extra development would be uh, an even bigger burden on that already um, ongoing drainage issue, and I would love to introduce it um, if there's some sort of, you know, uh, work plan in place or, uh, you know, any action uh, around getting that um, remedied. Sure, Mr. Blaine, give us a call. We'll work it out. Okay, I, I emailed earlier in the week about it. Okay. All right, any questions or comments from the audience? All right, with, with none, let's, uh, you finished, Mr. Lapine? Let's move to item uh, five. Do we have any? None? Mm -mm. All right, we have none. Item six. Uh, <coughs> Q in if you have any uh, beer liquor licenses, please. All right, we have none. Item, you know what? Actually, beer and liquor licenses, uh, I had. Uh, Okay, so when we get a beer and liquor license, um, it comes to the council's office f prior to going to the directors. So I don't know if number one, um, the facility has been paid for. It's if it's been um, you know, even even registered uh, or, or booked. Uh, I gotta say. So I'm not sure why that process is the way it is. Uh, if we can look into that, because I actually just sent one back. Uh, to you guys' office because I'm not going to sign off on a um, a beer or liquor license request or a special permit, a special events permit, not knowing if if the directors have even looked at it yet to make sure if it's even available. And then it comes before the council before it's even signed on. So uh, we just need to look into that whole process. Um, I mean, that, 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 that whole form is, is pretty outdated. We'll look into the process. All right, thanks. Um, all right, 7A, do we have uh, any objection to taking 7A, 1 and 2 in Globo? All right, with none, Ms. Marcotte, 7A, 1 and 2. 1, Crimson Golf LLC, application number 2019-495, dated July 25, 2019. Perform six repairs along an existing 12-inch Crimson Golf pipeline. Lake Grand E. Cali, Councilmember Blank. Number two, Hillcore Energy Company, application number 2019-542, dated August 12, 2019. Install three-inch flow line, Grand Lake Grand E. Cali, Council Member Blank. Mr. Blank. Often. A second. E. Cali. <laughs> huh? uh, Mr. Blank, offers going to have a second? Second. Second, Mr. LaFrance. Any questions or comments from the table, from the audience? All right, with none, machine is open. It passes seven yeas with two abstentions from myself and District 9. Um, Mr. LaFrance, do you have any objection of B, C, and D in Globo? The only thing, uh, C, they have it underneath me, but really that's Mr. Konovich. Okay, Mr. Konovich, you have any? Uh, uh, all right, let's take B, C, and D in Globo, please. C, T, L, Blanchard, RV, Trailer Park, and a floodplain zoning district. 2765 Hermitage Road, Lake Hermitage, Louisiana, Councilmember LaFrance. C, Venice Charters Unlimited, new owner for existing trailer park with 11 spaces. Emmett's Lane, Boothville, Louisiana, Councilmember Cognovich. D, Cedric and Wanda Miller, new residents in a floodplain zoning district, 116 Johnson Street, Ironton, Louisiana, Councilmember LaFrance. So Mr. LaFrance, office, Mr. Cognovich, your second? Second, second Mr. Cognovich. Any questions or comments from the table? From the audience, all right, with none, the machine is open. Measure passes 9-0. Item E, please. 
Dollar General Business Occupancy in an A2 Zoning District, 3499 Highway 39, Braithwaite, Louisiana, Councilmember Bartholomew. Mr. Bartholomew. No, no offer for discussion? Yeah. Offer for discussion at this time. Yeah. Mr. Arbor seconds. Ms. Rose. Yes, sir. The Dollar General um, came a couple of meetings ago. Um, Mr. Terrence Wilson and Samika Leonard applied for a map change to offer uh, the Dollar General purchase of their land. Uh, at the time, they had residents that came out in opposition, and um, it was suggested that maybe the applicant of the map change would draw and then try to seek uh, conditional use in an A2 zoning uh, classification, and that's what's before you now. I don't have any more questions. If, if anybody at the table has any questions, yeah. call, I'll call for a vote. Oh, yeah. yes, Ms. Newberry. Is this the same location? Yes, ma'am. Um, and no one's here and to speak for this in the public. Um, the applicants for the Dollar General are here, and um, inside the packet there was uh, there are some letters from opposition. They emailed the council as well as administration, uh, voicing their concerns along with pictures. And again, the applicant is here to speak for themselves. And it's the request that, that we had made before that went back and changed the permit, right? Yes, sir. To meet, this, meet the qualification, okay. Yes, sir. And this, um, this matter in the A2 zoning district um, is going to give the Dollar General permission to go there. But if the Dollar General happens to ever close down and a different type of commercial activity seek to operate in that location, they will have to come again and petition the council for approval. Mr. Blank. <clears throat> this may be a question for the uh, the developers here, but there are a few other dollar stores that have recently been built in the parish, uh, one in Empire, another in Jesuit Bend. I was wondering if anybody has uh, you know, the annual tax benefit to our local government from those new dollar stores. I know it might be too early to tell, but maybe some of the existing ones down in Buras some, or Bell Chase or some information. I think it would help us in our decision-making process. Hi, good, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Ed Voltolina with Dorset Development with the developers uh, for the site. Unfortunately, I don't have that information handy, but I can get it for, to you if you'd like. Um, you know, I can go back to... Uh, to Dollar General, get those that information again, get it to you. Perfect. And I Thank apologize, you. I didn't, you know, if I would have known, I would have had it beforehand. I've been, you know, paying close attention on social media what some of the residents are saying, and somebody, you know, put up the flag that we need, you know, X, Y, and Z amenities that the local government needs to provide, and you know, it takes tax money, uh, you know, to provide things like a firehouse and those types of things, and new water lines, and just wondering what you know our, our tax benefit would be. Thank you, though. Okay. And I'll, I'll uh, definitely make a point to get that information to you. Certainly. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. You can, Kogdovich? You can stay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I asked the last time, and it was they said they was going to bring certain people in the neighborhood and all. That was their complaints. Why are they still living there? If it's that bad of a neighborhood, <laughs> the people that's in the neighborhood is going to be going to the dollar store. So I don't see a problem with it. Um, and Councilman, I can tell you that um, when we were coming with some of the uh, other uh, Dollar Generals we've, we've done on the West Bank, we had numerous people stop me and ask me, when are you going to put one on the East Bank? And we actually approached Dollar General and asked them to look at their, their go through their matrix and see if one would be warranted there. And they did come back and say, yes, we'd like to put one here. And that's why we're, we're trying to put it there now. Well, I got one next door, and I haven't been held up or robbed yet. <laughs> <laughs> This new bearer. Um, with with the op, op, um, oppositions we're having with the locals, um, have y'all looked at other sites by any chance? Um, um, why th that site? Since you're having issues with the locals. Well, we well, we we have looked at other sites in that area, and this was the one that was available for um, purchase at that time. Um, we Dollar General will give us a site. Um, the way they work it is they give us a, a target area, they call it a suggested target area, and we have to find a site within a mile of that target area. And 
you know, was one of we did um, one of the per people in our office contacted several property owners along that area, and within that time, and um, this was the one property owner who responded uh, affirmatively. Okay, are you tied to the Dollar General in the Jesuit Bend area? Yes, ma'am. And um, do y'all have um, somebody to cut grass, keep up because? We're already getting complaints that it's not being. Yes, ma'am. I understand that, and what um, we do, dollar according to our leases, Dollar General is required to maintain them. But if we have find out that they're not, we do send people there, and we have done that. If you would address that, um, we have had someone just recently cut it, and I did find out that um, there was some bureaucratic snafu within Dollar General themselves where that one was not on there maintenance book so hopefully we've, we've gotten that Thank you. and I will tell you please if and I'll give everyone my card if there's ever an issue please call us and we'll get it taken care of right away thank you okay. because they seem to be they like the Jolly General down there even though you had an opposition at one time but yes ma'am and, and like I said we, we we will definitely take care of any issues if they're if you do let us know I'll give everyone my card and just call me and we'll make we'll get it taken care of if it does come up yeah. mr. Bethel I call for a vote Change. Uh, uh, vote. Move the second. He calls. Uh, Question for vote. Yeah. You. You move your second. You move the second. Second. Offer offer for the table for a vote. All right. Second by Mr. Albro. Any questions or comments further from the table, from the audience? All right. With, with none of the machines open. It passes nine zero. Thank you all very much, and council members. I have my card. If, um, if I can give it to someone, to give to distribute them. Thank you, and if. And uh, like I said, if there's any other issues, please call. Them. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Um, <coughs> you please cue in if you have any introductions of ordinances, resolutions. <laughs> Mr. Russo. Yes, I have a resolution transferring to the Plaquemines Port Harbor Terminal District Operational Authority and the financial responsibility of the ferries currently operated by the Plaquemines Parish Government and provide for the grant of use of charge of all property, vessels, equipment of the Plaquemines Parish Ferry Department to the Plaquemines Port Harbor Terminal District and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I have an ordinance to prohibit the parking of vehicles on Beta, Gamma, Delta, Theta, Sigma, Tau, Pi, Mu, Nu, Xi, and Row Streets within 100 feet of their intersections with Barrier Road to establish a penalty for the violation thereof, to authorize the parish president as designee to have no parking signs installed and otherwise provide respect there to. Mr. Barra. Yes, I have three. A resolution appointing a council, District 6 replacement member to the Plaquemines Recreation Advisory Committee and otherwise provide with respect there to. A resolution authorizing and directing the parish president or his designee to implement the recommendation of the internal auditor to contained in the ferry department audit project number 2018-01 relative to converting from a cash collection system to a credit card or toll tag system and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. An ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvement plan rehab dash BC WWTP project and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. That's it. Mr. Albro. An ordinance to rescind, annul, and set aside ordinance number 18-36 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. <coughs> An ordinance to amend chapter 15 of the parish code of ordinance to establish residential parking zone A1 on both sides of the entirety of Avenue B and West 2nd Street and both sides of Avenue A commencing at its intersection with Highway 23 running in an easterly direction to its intersection at Oak Tree Road to establish a penalty for the violation thereof and to authorize the parish president to have the appropriate signs installed and issue a residential parking permits and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Bartholomew? Yes, a resolution directing the parish president to create a policy to receive and process all public requests and complaints and otherwise to provide respect thereto. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Gooey. An ordinance approving the plan of resubdivision of the property of Rennie S. Buras, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, as shown on the map of resubdivision lot 5Y1A through 5Y1E, Belche Section D by Brian Hammett and Associates, certified by Hugh McCurdy III, PLS, dated June 20, 2018, revised August 19, 2019, 
The owner having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the Parish of Plaquemines without cost to the Parish Plaquemines Parish Government or Parish of Plaquemines, otherwise to provide with respect thereto, and we want to attach a map. Thank you. Possibly the Parish Attorney can get us a map. <laughs> I have two. A resolution confirming the recommendation of the Parish President, Kirk M. Lapine, and the appointment of Dr. Sarantha Strickland as a member of the Metropolitan Human Services <coughs> District Board of Directors representing Plaquemines Parish and otherwise provide with respect thereto. An ordinance authorizing the parish president to grant utility companies needing servitudes, easements, or right-of-ways for the location, construction, reconstructions, improvements, repairs, operation, inspection, patrol, replacement, and maintenance of utility facilities to service Plaquemines Parish government, PPG facilities, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. And that is all. All right, the request of Ms. Newberry, let's move to um, item 9C, please. 9C, a resolution expressing the Plaquemines Parish Council's support of the conceptual upgrade and expansion of Renatus Trailer Park, located on Highway 23 in Jesuit Bend, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Ms. Newberry? I'll offer. Ms. Newberry offers. That's for a second. Ms. Albro seconds. All right, Ms. Newberry. Uh, yes, um, this was brought up last um, council meeting. This is um, an expansion of the Renata Trailer Park that Mr. Nungesser is trying to expand on. Uh, the empty lot, if you uh, ha still have your map, um, is already zoned for Trailer Park. Um, he is going to uh, abide by the ordinances that we have already in place, which is 96-108 and 98-110. Um, I also have uh, Karuba Engineering here if anybody, anybody has any questions. Any questions or comments from the table? Mr. Russo. I'm sorry, Mr. Karnovich. Ms. Karnovich. So we're not responsible for the water lines, and so, like it says on that. We're going to put the meat at the road, and you're responsible for your own water lines to the trailers. So we actually had a meeting <clears throat> and discussed it with the, uh, the water department, and to my understanding, we're going to sign over the water lines running down the streets that service the uh, the trailers, wow. the individual trailers. It is trailer park and not the other well, hundred trailer park. Yeah, we're there. installing them. We're, we're putting them in. But, at, Mr. Nungess is putting them in at his cost. But then we're the signing water over. meters. Uh, what do we What do we talk about with the water meters? The water meters would be issued for each individual trailer. So every trailer that is permitted would get its own water meter upon that permit being approved and then we responsible for fixing them at, from then on the water meters the meters the lines going to the trailers it, it, I believe that's up to Plaquemines Parish uh, yeah we yeah. stuck with replacing the lines every time they break okay and that, any other trailer park they, the meters at the road and you got to run your own line to a trailer you responsible from the meter to the trailer well, we, we want to do whatever. Roy, come up to the mic is. a little bit. I'm sorry. Mr. Karuba again. Hey, Roy Karuba with Karuba Engineering. This is John Lambertson, one of our team members. I think what Mr. Um, Konovich is saying, like, um, when you build a house, you're responsible from the actual main line to your house. And that's what, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So they, the, Mr. Nungesser should be responsible from the main line to the, the meter, or either, either him or the um, actual um, person renting the trailer. So I'm not sure how he'll put that in place. Ultimately, I guess that's the question. Ultimately, Mr. Nungesser is going to be responsible for what you just described. And whatever else the law, you know, um, stipulates, mm -hmm. we don't want to do anything that's different from anybody else in the parish. This is an upgrade to an existing facility. And in the spirit of what we... We all talked about earlier with that guy with the landscaping. So this development's going to have hard surface roads. It's going to have area lighting, consolidated uh, garbage collection through a dumpster, fencing, landscaping. It's going to be dramatically improved in addition to being added on, too. So it is our intention to do whatever the parish says is required to make all those improvements, including the water. Um let me chime in. Mike, does this meet all the criteria for a new development for a, uh, a residential? It, I've had a few of them in my district, so I'm familiar with it. Is this process going to the same standard? I think that gets to answer Mr. Kodimich's question. 
Well, I think from what I'm hearing, from my own personal perspective, it's going to have to. But I think they're saying they're amenable to it going through the same process. Uh, as I recall from, from our meeting that, that we had with uh, Council Member Newberry, it, it seemed to, in its, in its generalities, as far as a, a development was concerned. But when we get down to the, to the, to the more specifics, we're going to have to take each specific, like the water lines, and hold them to the dictates of the ordinance. So what the law requires in each case. So uh, my question is, why are we going through this process as opposed to just not going through a regular resubdivision uh, uh, process? Well, and, and it's, again, I'll let the director of zoning chime in, but I think we're talking apples and oranges. The, 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 the rules and regulations and dictates in the ordinances that, that direct, uh, address a, a trailer park development are different than individual parcel of land development. You've got uh, individual spaces that are laid out in, in, in compliance with the trailer park ordinance, but these individual spaces are still owned by one common owner. So, I, I, whereas with a with a subdivision process, you have individual parcels of lands that may or may not be owned by a common owner. I guess that's am I am I with you on that? I, I'm assuming that's that's what a trailer park is, and it's just in, in its you know essential nature. And I'm assuming this one would be no different. No different. Uh, I think that's what Mr. Kardovich's concern is. I'm not going to speak out of turn yeah. for him, but I mean, if so, the difference is when you do a residential neighborhood, then everything from the roadways, if we decide to do it, it's not a private subdivision, the roadways, the lighting, the, all the infrastructure, whether it be uh, drainage culverts or, um, you know, even the water lines, including the meter, are all the responsibility then of the, of, of the parish. In this situation, it seems a little bit different, whereas the owner still owns all the property, even the land pretty much underneath the roadway. However, you're asking for the parish to assume the responsibility for the roadway, the lighting, mm -hmm. or, is it, or am I wrong? I'm not sure we're asking the parish to do that. What we're asking okay. is whatever your rules and ordinances are, we want to design the project to be in strict accordance with whatever that is. So if you tell me, go ahead and put the streets and the lights in, but because it's a trailer park, your owner, Mr. Nungesser, is going to be responsible for the maintenance and upkeep, and there's an ordinance that's, that stipulates that, then w that's what he's going to do. Okay. So and you would, and, and you're, you're absolutely correct in, your, in your, your view of it. What you basically have here is one big private piece Right. Piece of private property, and everything that happens there would be considered, unlike a subdivision development, would be considered private infrastructure. And in my view, the owner is 100% responsible for okay. that because it's on private property. It says, it says on number on uh, items discussed, number two, water line shall be maintained by parish parish government. Sewage line will be maintained by the owner, with parish being responsible only for sewer lift station on site. We're not, now, voting, we're not voting on that. We're voting on the actual ordinance itself. What well, the ordinance is that. They want us to put meters at each trailer. Well, that's going to make this trailer park unique, I think, is the point. Well, we're going we're gonna to make every other trailer well, park I, unique? I had, I had a water leak, and the parish did not come pay for my water leak. I was responsible from the road to my house, and that's going to be the same situation. He's going to be responsible from the main lawn to each trailer. So does that clear that up, Mr. Cognovich? Yeah, as long as he's responsible from the main lawn to the trail, each trailer. Because that's what it is in every other trailer park. Even if they have 10 trailers with 10 meters at the road, you're responsible from the meter to the trailer. Exactly. All right. Mr. Dugas. There is another trailer park that does have water mains that run through neighborhood streets. Albeit this is supposed to be a private lane, the water main is maintained by the parish on the other existing trailer park. It's the property is owned by one person, but it's multiple properties. But there is a trailer park in Bell Chase that has a similar situation. The only thing is the streets are hard surfaced and public streets. But the water main is maintained by us. 
All right, uh, Mr. Russo. So you meant to say you meant to say that the the main street on a trailer park that you just referenced was a public street or a private street? The trailer park I'm referring to is a public streets, and there's individual meters at each lot, and those trailers are responsible for the meter to the trailer, and we maintain from our side the meter to the main. Okay, that's a public including street. fire hydrants. So, so let me ask you this: This trailer park is going to be a public street or a private street trailer park? It's my understanding it's going to be a private street. And all of the infrastructure that you put in will be a private infrastructure maintained by the owner except from the meter to the trailer? No, I think from the meter to the trailer is going to be maintained by the owner. And the, the main trunk line, the main trunk line from Highway 23 feeding each meter will be also maintained by the private individual? That's my understanding. Okay. And, so, and also, it's my understanding, excuse me, Mr. Russell, that the only thing the parish would maintain would be a lift station that has to be put in the rear of the property. And so I guess the, the more basic question referred as Mr. Black was heading in that direction was um, why wouldn't you go in and send the plans through all of the departments and directors and go through the normal process of a private trailer park approval before you came to the council for an expression of support for a conceptual. So does this mean that we'll have to come back and adopt a final ordinance approving this, sub this uh, trailer park? I don't know the legalities. Mr. Yes. Nunn, I'm sorry. So that, that's the, the question, I guess, is why are we going through this now when you could have gone to the permit office, did all of the paperwork, laid it out, been approved by all of the directors, and then come to us and say we approve this trailer park? Well, quite candidly, that's what our client, Mr. Nungasser, asked us to do. He asked us to come in a more proactive manner to run it by everybody before we got into the details of the design. We had a meeting some time ago with a lot of people in this room and ran through the project, the applicable ordinances, and made the commitment then to proceed with the design in accordance with the laws of the parish and the ordinances. So I think this is more, I don't want to use the word formality, and I, I certainly don't necessarily want to coin it as a courtesy, and I certainly appreciate where you're coming from. I think that's just was the desire of the owner to do this first before it went through the expense of having our firm do the detailed design. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Roussel, I sat in a meeting with Ms. Newberry and Mr. Nungasser, and it's my understanding that because of the extensive renovations he's proposing on this trailer park, before he went, expended um, the design fees and all the other fees associated with making the presentation to the uh, uh, the uh, permit office, that he kind of basically wanted a general buy-in before he went and expensed those funds. So, yes, it's unconventional, um, but my understanding is that's what his thinking was, and obviously Ms. Newberry agreed to go ahead and introduce this resolution and get that done. I think he would have done just as good by sending us some pictures, and once we saw it, we would have gladly asked him to clean it up. But having said that, <laughs> I don't understand, you know, why this conceptual uh, approval is necessary. But it is my understanding that once you complete and follow all of the subdivision ordinance regulations and have a plan in place, that you will come back here for a approval of a trailer park. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Mr. Bartholomew. My question. Sorry. Mr. Gooey. I think the directors will. What's that? It, in the, you know, if there's any existing infrastructure where there's a servitude that the parish has and maintains, that is the only thing it would be obligated to continue to, to uh, maintain. So any new servitudes or any new um, um, liabilities or something that would come to the parish, this council would have to approve because that would be something that would have to be recorded um, and it's within y'all's power to approve. So all of the ordinances would still have to be maintained and followed. Um, 
uh, the passing of this resolution is just that. It's a resolution. All the existing ordinances in place will have to be followed and maintained just like all the other ones. And once again, it was my understanding Ms. Newberry agreed to introduce this so that, you know, Mr. Nungesser would, I guess, feel comfortable having some buy-in from the council before he went, expended money uh, during the total design. I'm to assume that uh, the letter, items discussed, attached, is not part of the agreement. No. That was meeting minutes. So that's totally out. And what we are going to rely on is the staff to make sure that the trailer park is put in to parish specifications. And so we're just kind of, I don't know what to call this, but... <laughs> I'd say unique, maybe. <laughs> and, you know, perhaps we ought to look at this maybe on all projects and see if we give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But my, my only other issue would be, uh, based on this, you know, complying with the ordinance, there's no other action needed other than us adopting it when it's finished, right? Mm -hmm. No, I believe, yes. Oh, yeah. The conceptual would be presented. You would receive the plot. Every, all the directors would present their comments, and then it would be presented to you all for final approval. So, yeah, this does nothing but say, it's a good idea, it's great, we like it, move forward, and do the right thing, and follow the ordinances, and when it comes back, we'll approve it if you did. Yeah. And okay. so who will maintain the treatment plant? The lift station. Is that what it's going to be, a lift station going into public sewer, or is it going to be a treatment plant? No, it's a, it's, it's a lift station going into public sewer on Highway 23. Yeah. And so we'll be responsible for the lift station. Yes. That's part of the new sewage uh, development. That and is that a new right of way acquiring that we'll have to do? Yeah, I think we're going to have to put us. I think we talked about putting a right of way in the back. Mm -hmm. If you give oh, sorry, you guys right access. Right. So, so then it goes a little further then. You see, we're really unwinding the cart a little bit more because Mr. Garris just said that all of the right of ways that will be required to be maintained now are the ones that we have unless we have to accept some more. And by saying this, we accept the concept and we accept the fact that we are going to require more right of way for that lift station. I, I don't know yet. There. We don't. We haven't gotten into the detailed design. Was the lift station built? I don't know. I think the, the lift, station, I think the lift station was part of the overall plan anyway. Ken, yes. you may be able to help with that. Um, on. Two things. The uh, I believe the sewer lift station that is planned is already in a servitude. There is a right of way going to the back towards the river. The other thing I wanted to mention that there are several that I can think of in Jezza Bend actually that have a water main that run down a private lane that has fire hydrants that we do maintain that water main and the hydrants that have separate meters going to the trailers. So there is precedent set already in this parish. Well, I don't have any more questions as long as it follows the ordinance. All right, any other questions or comments? Let's do better. All right, all right. from the audience, from the audience. One second. Oh. Yes, Ron Warren Lawrence, 120 Timber Canal Lane. Only one reason for this. He wants every trailer to have their own meter. He can do the same thing by putting a master meter on the water line he puts in and put his own private meters for each trailer. Of course, he'd have the headaches of picking up the billing and maintaining if they have leaks and stuff. There's only one reason for it, and that's it. He wants to put in a situation where you have accepted another water line to maintain. I agree there's been some streets done where you've put water lines and just water lines in on a new paved street. They had individual sewer treatment. They were treated for a subdivision of lots, created lots of individual lots of di a particular size that met all subdivision qualities. This is not doing that. This is simply a system that will benefit the owner and have no benefit whatsoever for the parish except putting more responsibility for maintenance on you, maintenance on customers that are in and out with trailers, you collecting deposits and everything. This is some problem that is for the parish, no benefit to the parish, but strictly a benefit to Mr. Nungesser. Thank you. Mr. Blank. 
definitely just want to circle in with, you know, we need to be aware that we're not, you know, subsidizing somebody else's business or, you know, socializing the expense and, you know, letting him privatize the profits or whoever it may be. And that we need to be, you know, cognizant of that when we're accepting infrastructure. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Water lines on private property is a responsibility of the owner. Is that correct? That's my understanding. That's why I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I don't understand what it, where it's unclear. I mean, I, I think it's very clear that everything from, from, except for the water main itself, which we already maintain anyway, is our responsibility. Everything else is going to be the responsibility of the owner, period. Period. Everything on private property, not just from the meter to the trailer, but the water line to the main. Everything. Everything on, on private property. That's my. That's not right. Mr. Rousseau. That's not what was just said. What was just said that the water line running down the street is going to be maintained by the parish. And then the meters are going to pick up from there to the trailer, and those lines will be maintained by the private individual. If so this is That's different than what was just stated. If this is a private lane on private property, I would disagree. I would think that that would be the responsibility. I'm agreeing with you, but I'm not saying that that's what I just heard. Right, correct. And that's not what I'm hearing up here now. Correct. What I'm hearing is, is that the parish is going to maintain the water line going down the street, down the private street. And then from that point on, when the meter takes off from there, then the private individual will be responsible for that. That's, that's what I'm hearing from the audience. But if that's not what it should be, it's going to be up to y'all to make sure that it's handled like that. Well, look, I'm not, I'm not going to count out loud, Mr. Kruber, but I can tell you, Mr. Kognovich, Mr. Blank, Ms. Newberry, myself, Mr. Roussel, and probably a couple other people that want to talk have expressed our opinion on how, who should maintain what. So, you know, I'm going to vote for the conceptual design and everything. I would just suggest that when you do the final ordinance, that in it, it specifies who's responsible for what. And I think you know how we feel. Of course. Exactly. So We're being recorded, right? Yes, yeah, right. Okay. I, yeah, so right. Let me just say it again. So <laughs> we're going to do whatever y'all ask us to do and be in strict accordance with the laws of this parish. And be Mr. Nungesser wants to be a responsible owner, period. So if you guys tell us that we need to maintain the water lines and y'all are going to make, that's what we're going to do. Right. It's never been in question, and I want to make sure that that's clearly stated on the record. And I'm happy to discuss individually or in a group, whatever questions you, you may have. Yeah, well, I personally look forward to, to this project. I mean, that, that's a, a terrible eyesore as it is now, and, uh, you know, thank you for taking on this project. Yeah. Mr. Gooey? Mike, uh, is there any similarity with an apartment complex? Do apartment complexes have individual meters for each apartment, or are they using one main meter? Well, you mean in general or? In Plaquemines Parish. Well, I mean, they, it could vary. Uh, I, I would think that, that, that maybe a, a newer complex that was set up a little bit more, uh, you know, from a code perspective, a little bit more compliant, uh, mm -hmm. would have separate meters. But you find older, you know, stuff is one. That, that, exactly. And then the and then the, the tenant, the uh, landlord may factor it into the tenant's rent. Or, That's what Mr. Lawrence was saying. Yeah, it would be up to them. Right. But if it, we don't we don't know of any way the main line running on the private property going to the apartment complex, that that main line is the responsibility of the parish, even though it's on private property. I, I don't, don't know. I don't know of any okay. specifically, but in my general take would be. It would be the, the 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 owner's responsibility. I mean, that's just my take. Maybe I'm wrong, but that that's. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to, to to look at situations that may be similar, but instead of trailers, apartment complex, and what's the policy for that? Uh, in any jurisdiction, there's a lot of combinations of things out there. But it... all right, Miss uh, Miss Newberry has called the question. I call the question. Machine is open. And it passes eight with one abstention from uh, District 7. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you very much. Good luck. By the way, on a lighter note, I, as a design professional, I sit in front of councils all the time. And I'm not saying this because I'm getting recorded. You guys do a great job of handling the public. The problem with the public is it's public. And 
not all these councils that I've been privileged to stand in front of for almost 34 years handle it with, with the grace and the elegance that all of you do. And I just want to say as a, a citizen, it's refreshing to sit because y'all do a good job of keeping people calm. I'm not sticking around, <laughs> but because I, I'm normally the one that gets them stirred up. But look, uh, just a very humble thanks to what, what all of y'all do, for the record. Thanks. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, 9A1. An ordinance by the Plaquemines Parish Council as and on behalf of the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority Board of Louisiana, the West Bank Levy District, Plaquemines Parish, and Plaquemines Parish Government, to appropriate temporary work easements and temporary road easements in certain portions of lands in Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, to construct the West Bank of Vicinity Armoring WBV ARM-03 System Armoring Reach WBV-MRL 1.2B August to Oakville Baseline Station 512 plus 68 to 560 plus 40 Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana Project for Mississippi River Levy Flood and Hurricane Protection Purposes and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Roussel. I'll offer this five minutes for a second. I'll offer a second, Mr. Gooey. Any questions or comments from the table? From the audience? All right, with none, the machine is open. And it, I don't pass as nine and zero. At this time, um, I'd like to call up uh, the next item. Uh, it's going to be Ms., uh, the clerk of court's item. What is that? Seven? No. What? Which one is it? All right, 10A3. Move to 10A3, please. Okay. 10A3. A resolution, a resolution to authorize executive execution of a memorandum of understanding between Plaquemines Parish Government, the Plaquemines Register of Voters, and the Louisiana Department of State, Office of the Secretary of State, to establish a temporary branch office for early voting at the courtroom located at 301 Main Street, Bell Chase, for the purpose of establish, establishing an access line to the statewide election registration integration network in order to eliminate manual processing of early voting in the parish and provide more timely voting results and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. All right, this is under suspension, so I'll offer for the suspension. Ask for a second on suspension. Second by Mr. Kotovich on suspension. Any questions or comments on the suspension from the table, from the audience? All right, with none, the machine is open on the suspension. Mr. Blank. It passes non zero. Um, I'll offer as read, previously read. Ask for a second, Mr. Albro seconds. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Clerk. And thank, uh, the reason why I moved you up, she's got her name tag still on. She's in Baton Rouge at a conference. I'm sorry. And drove down. But yet you couldn't you know? remember my name. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations on your election. I know you're oh, very hard on it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Kim Charlich Vaughan, Clerk of Court yeah, for Plaquemines Parish. And I'm here with uh, Lynn, who's the chief deputy for the registrar's office, and also Kathleen's here as well. Um, we have put forth this um, request to be able to take a manual site um, and turn it into a more efficient early voting site for the voters of Plaquemines Parish. Um, for years, um, we've had this site at the Belchase Library. And um, since the courtroom at the annex at 301 Main Street has become available, um, we are looking to move that manual site to my office and uh, into the courtroom at the 301 Main Street address and be able to expedite the um, manual location. Um, the MOU that needs to be signed through the for the parish th with the Secretary of State's office is requesting that you all support this move and also there's a little funding involved in making sure that we can purchase the necessary equipment to um, make this site um, more efficient and actually um, reduce any, uh, um, improve accuracy and reduce any risk involved with a manual site. 
So I just wanted to come forth and be here to answer any questions that you may have. I know um, several of you as elected officials have attended the monthly meetings and we've been talking about this for some time. And um, my hopes was to make sure that this got taken care of before this election. Um, the Parish Board of Election Supervisors, we meet um, prior to each election and this has been something that we've been discussing for several years now, but we were just waiting for that location to come available. And the reason why we chose that location is um, um, and the reason why it hasn't has always been a manual site prior to this would be that there is a cost in the Aaron line, um, the line that is a dedicated line with the Secretary of State's office for transmitting results. And so my office has that as we result, I mean, as we transmit the results um, for the elections. So we were not able to get one in the Belchase Library. So this would resolve the problem by moving the site to my off to um, 301 Main Street, where my office is, and already has that um, Aaron line dedicated to the state there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Russo. Good afternoon, Mr. Ehrlich. Good afternoon, Mr. Russo. That's a name. I uh, have many questions for you today. Okay. First of all, thank you for putting up the 5000 Oh, I didn't even get to that yet. But you, you're right on that, aren't you? <laughs> I'm curious to know where the rest of the money is coming from. Does the administration identify those funds? There is an election budget that's currently 29,000 um, in that budget, as you know, um, so we will do a, um, we'll do a PO with those funds. As you know, I think actually somewhere down the line, you're going to have to maybe budget another 10, 10,000 or so. Um, we have two big time elections coming up. And the thing is, it's, it's just based on budget because we don't know until the Secretary of State sends us the bill for what the elections cost. But based off looking at past history, um, et cetera, we may need to amend that um, slightly. By the end of this year? Uh, yes, sir, to pay for the, the October and November elections. I can add to the approximate cost for both elections. We average about $13,500, then a little, well, actually about $14,500, a little under $15,000 per election. And any time that I'm able to reduce the commissioners that service these polling locations, I do that. But it is set by statute because it is an unnecessary expense when we have a commissioner in charge and two commissioners sitting in a polling precinct and we only receive five voters for that day. It's costly, but it's happening all over the state. And I know there's been some... Um, interest in trying to change some of that as far as we won't need as many commissioners in the polling locations. And also I might mention there's something that you all get every year about combining polling locations. So that might be something that we can look at in the future too to also reduce those commissioner payrolls that we pay on election day for both those elections. Now the last couple of years we've only had two, I mean we only had the fall election so we had the primary and the general for both um, fall elections and we haven't had a spring. It looks like um, what, well, definitely we will have have a spring election this coming um, spring in 2020 for the presidential primary. So that adds an additional um, cost. So where Mr. Beer stated that we only have 29000 in the elections budget, um, and hopefully he was going to pull the 10000 from this with the clerk's office ma um, actually contributing 5000 to cover the cost of this move, um, it's going to be more expensive next year um, be just because of the additional spring election. So it's something that would have needed to be looked at. I also wanted to mention that this does not affect any of the other early voting locations. Um, Port Salford at the registrar's office, they have early voting there. They're already um, using the electronic readers and the laptops and all the equipment that is needing. So they have an efficient early voting site in Port Salford. On the East Bank, it's being held at the um, Dave Ant Community Center. And I would hope in years to come, perhaps I could move that to my office at the um, new courthouse, but we have not gotten, have not looked into the cost of having an additional line in that office. Something I'm going to work with the Secretary of State because eventually we can do that as well and perhaps save some um, funding there. So I just, I just wanted to be here to answer any type of um, questions that you may have um, in order to get this passed so that we can get rolling with getting, purchasing the equipment and having the training um, necessary for the early voting sites. How many reams of paper do you think you're going to say that you don't have to fax? Well, <laughs> at the Belchase location, depending upon how big the election is, it's anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 sheets that get faxed down to me per early voting cycle. 
So the efficiency so, in that alone, not having, and I did want to state that, it, and the trend is upticking on how much, how many people in the parish vote early. In 2018, in November election of, of 18, we had about 3,300 early voters. And then uh, right after that in December, we had 3,500. So it went from 40% to 50% of our voters actually out there doing early voting. So it really is a, um, a crucial thing for us. And I feel that as the um, chief elections officer, it's my obligation to make sure that the voting experience for the voters are there and that the efficiency is there. So that's why I come to you today and ask if you please consider this. Right. And whatever paper is faxed, you've got to double that because you know if you've early voted there that you have to fill out that actual paper. Speak here and oh, tell sorry. your name. Sorry. Yes. Lynn Jenkins, Chief Deputy Registrar of Voters. But you would actually have to double that amount of paper and toner because everything that's faxed is actually on that piece of paper that y'all fill out every time y'all go early vote. So you double that. And you would take from four stations that you would have to go to in line down to two. You would go straight to the person with the computer, with the activator. They'll swipe your driver's license. You'll sign the book there. They'll give you a card. Then you go straight to the voting machine, and you're done. Well, thank you, Ms. Vaughn Terlich. <laughs> Why is that Terlich so Vaughan. difficult? <laughs> it's because of all the signs out there. We keep seeing that name. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Luckily, you don't see my sign. <laughs> but anyway, I would thank you for this. I think it's a long time in coming, and I think that we've uh, talked about this, and I'm glad it's coming to reality because mm -hmm. I know that it's a nightmare to have to fax all of that on elections, mm -hmm. and it's uh, more efficient to do it this way. So thank you for bringing this forward, and congratulations on your reelection. Thank you. Any Ms. other Newber questions? Yeah, Ms. Newbauer. Oh, I think you answered my question. Um, is that 15000 for equipment and supplies, installation? That's a one-time fee, or is that on a Yes. Day? Okay. Um, I think originally when the MOU was presented, it was going to be about $45,000. $49,000, dollars $49, excuse me. And we were able to work through that. The registrar looked at that and was able to reduce some of the equipment that they needed and that they may have already had. And then... Um, the main thing is the line, having the line, because that would have been a monthly charge, and we already have the line at the clerk's office. Mr. Blank. Yeah. Sure. So now that the uh, the pumpkin is gone and we're going to be relinquishing the lease across the street, uh, how is parking going to be there? We considered that as well. We should still have about the same amount of parking as we have at the library. You know, I know there's going to be a time to come when we won't have that. We have now the additional parking on side of 301, but as um, – Others have stated before we have the sides of the highway, um, and actually at the library that has been a problem of not having enough parking, so it'll be the same thing. Yeah. That's Unless you want to um, find us some more parking, but I think... No, the, the tomato shed is a lot of parking. Yes, there is, there is room behind, you're right. And, I mean, there is room behind, between the 301 Main Street and the tomato shed, where the judges used to park in there no longer, well, there was only two cars. But, I mean, that is area that could be developed for parking as well. Oh, that's right. That's the railroad track, right? Yes. Okay, so scratch that. All right. Any other questions or comments from the audience? All right, with none, the machine is open. It passes 9-0. Have a safe drive back. I will. And on behalf of the Registrar's Office, the Clerk's Office, and the people of Plaquemines, we thank you. Now they'll have a very expedited voting experience. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's get back to 9-2, uh, please. In ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of a part of lot JR-1 Live Oak Plantation, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, into lots JR-1-B and JR-1-C Live Oak Plantation, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, as shown on the plan of resubdivision by Dufresne Surveying and Engineering, Inc., dated May 20, 2019, though not having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the Parish of Plaquemines, without cost to Plaquemines Parish government or the Parish of Plaquemines, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Newberry. I'll offer. I'll offer. Ask for a second. Second. Second, Mr. Russo. Any questions or comments from the table? Uh, this Good is back. just a, an empty lot next to um, her home now that she wants to build a house, so she's just following all the ordinances. Any questions or comments from the table? From the audience? All right, with done, machine is open. Dr. Gooby's acceptable. Mr. Gooby's absent. Passes eight with one absence from uh, District 4. 
8-0-1 absence. Item 5, please. An ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of the property of Quattro B LLC, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, is shown in the map of resubdivision properties, lots A, B, C, 43, and 44, and closed alley into lot A1, Square G, Hodge Hunt Hero Subdivision, Bell Chase, Louisiana, by Bryant Hammond and Associates, certified by Hugh McCurdy, the third PLS, dated June 18, 2019. The owner having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemines without cost to Plaquemines Parish Government or the parish of Plaquemines and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Albro. Offer is read. Offer next for a second. Thank you, Mr. Kondovich. Mr. Albro. Uh, yes, sir. Everything's included. I'd just like to add that a water meter and line is already in service at this location. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments from the table? From the audience? All right, with none, the machine is open. <laughs> I didn't even know my stuff was in, being introduced today. Pass it 906, please. An ordinance by the Plaquemines Parish Council as and on behalf of the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority Board of Louisiana, the West Bank Levy District, Plaquemines Parish, and Plaquemines Parish Government to appropriate temporary work, area easements, and temporary road easements in certain portions of lands in Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, to construct the West Bank of Vicinity Armoring, WBV ARM-10 system armoring, reach WBV-MRL 3.2, Bell Chase to Oakland Point, baseline station, 310 plus 00 to 444 plus 00, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, project for Mississippi River levee, flood and hurricane protection purposes and otherwise to file with respect thereto. Mr. Gooey. Offered. Ask for a second. Check Mr. Albro. Any questions or comments from the table? From the audience? Yeah, I do. Are they lifting that levy? Is that what's going on? I mean, no, it's basically an armoring. What they do is they rip off the um, the water side and they put an armoring on top of it and then they come back and put dirt on top of that. Okay. It's like a um, almost like a rip wrap type of material. But you had a little question mark. All right, any questions, comments from the table? From the audience? All right, with thumb machines open. Passes 907, please. An ordinance by the Plugs Parish Council as and on behalf of the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority Board of Louisiana, the West Bank Levy District, Plaquemines Parish, and Plaquemines Parish Government to appropriate temporary work area easements and temporary road easements in certain portions of lands in Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, to construct the West Bank of Vicinity Armoring, WBV ARM-11, System Armoring, reach WBV-MRL 5.2 and WBV-MRL 6.1, English Turn Bend to Bell Chase, Baseline Station, 0 plus 00, zero to 255 plus 25, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, Project for Mississippi River, River Levee, Flood and Hurricane Protection Purposes and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I'll offer an extra for a second. Second. Second, Ms. Newberry. Any questions and comments from the table? From the audience? All right, with none, machines open. Mr. Bartholomew. Pass it 9 0. Item B, please. A resolution authorizing the removal of the Point Lahash Ferry Landing Bridge replacement from DOTD's off bridge system and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Mr. Bartholomew, I'll offer for a second. Second, Mr. Uh, LaFrance. Any questions or comments, Mr. Bartholomew? I have none. If, uh, I have questions if you guys are here to answer those expeditiously. Danny Fisher. Can't hear you, Mr. Bartholomew. I said Mr. Dugas is here to take care of those questions expeditiously and very effectively. So whoever have questions, he'll answer. Mr. Blank. Sure. What is the time limit for us to act on this? Is it this, this, uh, this cycle and... What is the cost share to Plaquemines Parish government? There's three grant programs that FHWA has available to Plaquemines Parish government. All three have a cost share of 20%. Right now we have the Bell Chase 2 vessel being, it's under contract to get uh, repairs done. That we came up with our 20%, Mr. John got earlier this year. 
We will be coming forward to ask for 20 percent for the Plaquemines Pride to be funded probably right before the end of the year or maybe in the first quarter of next year. The engineering for the ramps to be done is around $750,000. We'll need 20 percent of that 750. The DOTD has not notified us when we'll need that 20 percent. But you're also going to need 20 percent for the actual ramp itself? The ramps will not be, I will not ask for 20 percent for the ramps to be done this year, but you will need it in the next two years. So I guess the follow on Mr. Bling's question is, if we're investing quite a bit of money on these two ramps. So, I mean, obviously this is the administration's long-term solution, or your solution, I'd say the administration's. Is this the long-term solution to our ferry system issue? I mean, 20 percent right now for, let's talk about outside of the ferries, for the ramps. 20 percent for the engineering, so that's 140,000, actually 150,000 right there that we're going to need to budget out of general fund next year. And then each ramp itself is, per the email you sent, is $3 million a piece. That's correct. So that's $1.2 million for two ramps. That is correct. All right, so we're almost looking at a million and a half bucks that for general fund money. Wherever you can find the funding. Mr. Blank. Mentioned before when we were having these discussions, um, maybe we should have pulled the trigger already, but if we need to go to a centralized ferry system to save to, to save money in the long run, I mean, should we be doing it with this engineering design and construction process? And if so, has there been a decision made? Is there anybody that has an opinion on that? I mean, is it, did, what do you all think? No, I've asked that question, Mr. Blank, probably for four years. So good. That's a great question. I uh, would love to see if you can get an answer to it, Mr. Lapine. I have a question to it. You want to answer me? Are you talking to the president? Sure. I mean, given our budget situation, where eliminate the eliminate the ferries, close it down, shut it down, separate the parish from east and west, and case closed. That is well. That's not case closed. It's done. You don't have to worry about no transporting people. You don't have no. to worry about people getting to the hospital to the doctor's appointment. You have to worry about all that. Just do it and get it over with. It's always an issue. Every time we try to do things to, with the East, uh, uh, the, where, where we need to get stuff done, and we're getting a whole bunch of money from the federal government, we're not paying all of it. Just think if we had to buy it to pay for the whole process, then you'll really have we'll really have for problems. But again, anytime you want to do something, just go ahead on and do that. And I support that that that, that uh, legislation to self separation and get it over with. Be done. Then you won't have no more questions. Then you have to deal with the other stuff on this side of the road. So I'm asking these questions from a place of, I'm, look, we have a $3.5 million shortfall in the, in the ferry budget. And here we have this opportunity, instead of repeatedly fixing our clunker car, maybe we can get a new one just up the river or just slightly in a different spot. Um, maybe that's more centralized to where you know, we're not running two boats, two crews, maintaining multiple ferry landings, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, we have a chance to rethink the ferry department within the bounds of our fiscal reality. And, I mean, there's a lot of hard decisions that we're all going to have to make, and I think everybody's going to have to compromise just a little bit. Um, or we're going to face a situation like Bogalusa is facing, where they've put the local government aside and the state of Louisiana is currently handling their affairs. And I don't want to see that happen here. I think that we're a group of determined and talented individuals, and we need to come together as a team and work through this. Mr. Bartholomew? Yes. If you're going to put one ferry rank to exist and plug the parish, you gonna put it midway from Point Lahange to Braithway. It might be okay. Wait a minute. Wait, let me Lahange. finish. Can I finish? Certainly. All right. It's one fair you gonna put. So why would I have to come all the way up that way, then go all the way back down to Port Salfa to my doctor, then come all the way back up, you're gonna go back to my house. That doesn't make sense. Now the the question is very simple. We have to just like you said, look at the budget. And we are, we are trying to provide the services that we need to provide to the public, to the people. That's our job. Those of a necessity nature. 
Now, you can do it several ways. There are different ways of doing it. The number of trips, the number of hours, the number of crews you have, the length of the, the uh, operation of the, of the ferries. All those things can come into place. The state, to give it back to the state. Like everybody who want to take it over and run it, let them run it. You know, since we can't do it. If that's our problem, we're talking about money here. Now here, they're going to give us $6 million. So we're going to throw that away. Don't worry about the $6 million because we can't afford to put a million, million and, and 20000 million in, whatever, the, whatever our share would be. We can't afford that. So we'll give up the $6 million and keep crossing the, the ramp like it is. Or take it to somewhere else, and we're going to build a new ramp anyway. We're going to build a new ramp. So what is the difference? It becomes an operation. So we have to look at the operation of the ferries. That's what you want to look at. Look at. Then you see where the expenditures are really coming from. Where it is. We used to operate those ferries off the rule, uh, the road royalty fund, which was given to us through the state. That money always went to the ferries operating, and we never did spend all that money to maintain the ferry operations. Now we took it out of the ferries and put in general fund. And then you say, what's the problem? There are a lot of problems. So we have to look at all of it, not just one aspect of it, all of it. And do a forensic on, on the parish government itself. The whole budget, the whole budgetary item, including Bell Chase, including Port South, including Phoenix, including Boothville Venice, the whole nine yards. Everything that we are responsible for, everything that we are spending money on, every money and money that we receive from taxation, wherever it is, we need to identify the source and identify the expenditures of all the revenues. Then we can make a determination of what is the best way to move. Until we do that, we spin spinning wheels. Because it only takes five votes to get things changed. I agree with you. Uh, may I please ask the chairman if if we could go to my presentation on ferry uh, on on the ferries uh, later in the that's a little bit further back in the agenda. It might help to inform. No, you can, the, we can do it now. The decision we make. I think it's appropriate. Uh, Mr. Dugas, you had something while she's doing this. I I just wanted to point out that the discussion that y'all are having on the decision of the location of ferry system throughout the parish. This resolution does not affect any of that decision. This resolution is strictly to free up $3 million of off-system bridge funding that we can use on other bridges within this parish. With the, the other two sources will cover the ferry improvements, the ramp replacements, when that decision is finally made by the council and the administration. So the resolution, if we defer this or withdraw this resolution today, there's no progress being made with the funding that is available right now, and then the bridge money is still tied up into two ferry ramps that could be funded through two other sources. But the question is, is if we free this up, no, and we take the money from it, then you're going to come back to us with the ordinance and say, well, you took the $3 billion to begin with, now we have to go do the match for the $6 million. You're, no, sir. That is absolutely because false. We won't have any money in that project anymore. No, sir. That is that is false. We have three million dollars in two programs, six million total, that will be utilized one for the east side and one for the west side. So at that point, when we come to do the future ramp replacement, we will have to come to y'all and get the twenty percent to match the three million for each sides of the river. Okay, but this program that I'm telling you, this resolution is representing is for parish-wide off-system bridges. We have 26, 27 bridges within this parish that are on parish streets that this money is used for. For the last 12 years, it's been locked into the ferry ramps. So any money that's been trying to be utilized on fixing our off-system bridges could not be used. This money was not available. Now you pass this resolution, you're freeing up $3 million that I can use for bridge rehab within the parish. It could be East Bank Bridges, West Bank Bridges. We have them throughout. So we need this resolution to pass because there are other sources for the money that this resolution, that this program, All System Bridges, represents. And so that, are you including bridges like, for instance, the one that goes back by Happy Jack Canal? Martin Lane, Lane can be replaced of with this. Yes, and oh. Martin Lane Bridge is cheap. It's going to be probably somewhere around 
three to four hundred thousand dollars, which we could ask for twenty percent of that. You give me eighty thousand dollars, we can replace that bridge at Martin Lane. So there's, I mean, Lake Hermitage, Susie Bayou, and Deer Range was used during the off-system bridge program years ago. Look at the nice bridges you got back there. Okay, so I mean, this is this resolution. If you defer it, the the you're putting the other programs at risk. Although nothing will move forward till you put your twenty percent up anyway. I guess the scary thing is that you know when I read your email, you talked about the ferry landings. What's scary about it? The the ferry ramps. If we don't do anything, any action on the ferry ramps, they will close eventually. So the the construction, the administration will have to figure out a way to try to maintain the system going during the construction. But, no, but if we do nothing to those ferry ramps, they will close eventually. Yeah, but the question was, and it has been, like I told Mr. Blake a few minutes ago, for years, is what is this government's forward thinking on, on our ferry system, period? You know, we talked about, uh, you know, I asked Director Giles two years ago to go look for other property if we wanted to do two ferries and look for it just north of the current Point Lahash ferry system or just south, whatever, so when you construct it, it doesn't, you can still operate the other, other ramp. But what's going to happen is, is we're going to do construction, you're going to have to close the ramp for however much time. And then we, we invested all this money and, you know, getting back, I think, did you have a comment on, I think, that, yeah, Mr. Bartholomew? We already talked about that, the location of keeping those ramps in existing operation. We already have made comments about the uh, ramps being rebuilt and keeping the old ramps there until we build a new one. We do have property. Parish have property, front the courthouse and across the river from the courthouse directly. We own those those pieces of property that we can put those ramps there while we're building the, the new, new ramps. So why that's not happening? Well, we, uh, that's us to decide where we want to put it. We got, that's the comment from the uh, Department of Transportation. They recommend that we find a new, new uh, location and do them while we still have those in place. That was their recommendation from uh, the director, Secretary of Transportation. But it's up to this council to make that determination if that's the way we want to go. I mean, that's an option. Did say that. We said that a long time ago. I said that. Brought it up for discussion. But still, it means that this council have to make that determination. The, it's there. The land is there. One more thing I'd like to mention is the program, the resolution is representing the parish-wide program. The two other grants are solely for the ferries to be done. This, the resolution, the off-system bridge program is for parish-wide bridges. So you're really holding the other 26 bridges hostage or 25 bridges hostage for uh, funding that could be used for those by not passing this resolution. All right. I'll tell you what, Mr. Blank, if you want to hold this one, we'll come back to this one after this vote since he's, yeah. Uh, any other questions or comments on this particular item? You can leave it up. We're going to come right back to you. Hold on a second. From the audience? All right. With none, Mr. John, you want to go to vote? Machine's open. All right, passes 9-0. Right, Thank time, you very much. Yeah, Mr. Blank, uh, we'll go to item um, <coughs> F2 since, it's, since you have it up. Ferry tolls. F2, this is a discussion on the ferry tolls. Yeah, yeah, just a discussion. Next slide, please, Julia. All right, so currently we charge $1 for cars to pass on the ferry. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a trailer, it doesn't matter if you have a carload of folks. Um, um, that's when we are when we are collecting. Uh, senior citizens are free, kids are free, uh, trailers free, all that other stuff. Um, just on a sample trip, and this, you know, say representative of Point Lahash, 
uh, 10 vehicles on there, everybody's paying. Um, and we're going to collect 10 bucks. Um, next slide, please. So if we just went to a system that our neighbors have in place where uh, a pedestrian has a small fee, uh, a pedestrian that's, say, over 65 has an even further reduced fee, the vehicle driver, you know, we'd be charging $2, what our neighbors charge. Um, any additional passenger would be $1. Um, and then, you know, folks that are over 65 would pay their dollar. In a trailer, you know, we could charge, we could, we could decide this as a body, whether we charge by the axle, by the trailer itself, that type of thing. Kids under two are free. Um, and a sample trip would be, you know, 41 bucks or so. It's not going to get us over the finish line, but it's absolutely a step in the right direction. I want to point out this box up here. Um, this is a stainless steel safe. The top foot of the box is clear. You see your dollar go into the safe. Um, I'm going to have some legislation forthcoming where somebody from our finance department picks this up a couple days a week at random. Um, this needs to, there needs to be a system where the deckhand that is taking the dollar uh, is jotting down which category uh, is, you know, is, is boarding the vessel as well as, you know, the captain kind of looking out. He can't get it right every single time. But two independent um, logs, uh, more or less, are manifest. So we have a little bit of accountability and, and just transparency in handling the good citizens of Plaquemines Parish money. Um, if, if we had a box like this, it would make people feel a lot better about paying that extra dollar or so. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned the consistent data collection. One, next slide, please. Also, alternative revenue streams. is very common. Ferries in New York City to see outdoor advertising in the interior areas of the ferry. We could absolutely have um, some small outdoor advertising on the sides of the cabin, of course, within Coast Guard regulations. This could be a potential alternative revenue stream. I seen Mr. Black the other day tried to put a bold idea in front of the council. You know, I think we need some bold ideas here and there. Um, but, you know, it might be something we could consider looking at. There are a lot of people queued up. The average person is probably waiting 25 minutes. You can't turn the channel. Next slide, please. Anyway, thank you all very much. I mean, this is just this is just on the revenue side of things. You know, tucking in our shirt before we ask the mom for money, right? You know, so I think if we just start rowing in the right direction, we could we could begin to handle the bigger existential questions of, you know, do we have one boat or not? But I mean, I think you know, we need to get in line to at least what our neighbors are doing. And I don't think this is asking very much. It's a very valuable service. It costs about nine dollars per per crossing. You know, we're mostly giving it away. And of course, this has to come with a, you know, we have to look at things across the board in other sectors, you know, how are we charging for mosquito control, boat harbors, all these other things. And, you know, I'm willing to take the time to look in, to, you know, whether the best practices around the country or just or even around the region. Um, thank y'all. Appreciate y'all paying attention. Any questions? Any questions or comments from the audience or from the table? Were these, were, are these ideas that this body or the administration would like to implement? I know people are going to call. You know, I don't have the exact change. There might be six months where we're kind of, you know, cutting our teeth, you know, where, where there might be a little bit of a, you know, a transition period where the, where the public might push back here and there. But I think ultimately, in order to run a solvent system, we need to start implementing ideas like this. And this doesn't go as far as what the internal auditor suggested. He wanted to go to a completely cashless system. And I feel like this is, this is just the first step on the, on the set of stairs to get us, um, you know, in compliance with those suggestions. Dr. Gouy. Thank you, Rishi. Uh, and I do think that that's just a good start. Uh, I think everyone at this table has been having their thoughts about what to do about the ferries and how to make them efficient, and no one stepped up. So I want to thank you for that. Something that Mr. Bartholomew said also came, uh, which I think is great, is the efficiency, when to run the ferry, how many people are put on the ferry and that. And that takes some thought. And I know that you guys have been working with Mr. Horton. He's the guy. He runs the boats. He's the one that should tell us, hey, man, we can do it this way or we can't do it that way, and bring it to the table. And then I hope, I hope the parish president takes a position 
and talks to us about, we've looked at this. We've worked with several council members, Mr. Blank, whomever, and say, these are our recommendations. And let us be the ones to up or down and take the consequences of that one way or the other. And I know you've been working on that as you've been working on so many other things, and this is just another thing on your pile. But I would welcome it. I would welcome something coming from the administration saying, hey, guys, we've looked at it. This is the best way to go for now. And thank you, Dr. Gooey. I did instruct uh, uh, Director Epley to get those talks going. And they have done a comprehensive plan years ago, but we want to revamp it and and and, and utilize it and, and figure out what's the best incentives for us. So we will all work in actively on that. And, and, and I know budget hearings are coming up and we're mm -hmm. squeezed. So if we could get some answers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, before that time so we can help out, so we can help out to get the, the budget in, into a workable order, I know I would appreciate that. Right. Let me ask this question. I'm not sure if um, anybody knows. Uh, we, I don't think we have an ordinance that tells, that sets the times for the ferry schedule, do we? I think that's just um, set by I'm, you guys. I'm not sure. I, we I, set the rates, but we don't set the times. Like We don't set the times that government opens and it closes. It could be administrative duty. I, I, we'd have to right. look into that. I'm not sure. I mean, if you all decided to shut it down at 8 o'clock, you can do it, right? We all it's, it's certainly not in the code. There may be some ordinance on laser fish we could find, but I think Kim and I spoke about it, and there is none about cut down on the time and the overtime. Mr. Chairman, we, we've spoken, I've spoken with uh, Mr. Horton, the superintendent, and also somebody else in the department. They've come back with ideas on possibly changing the schedule, the work schedule, not necessarily changing the time that the boat runs, but going to a 10 and 5 schedule instead of a, a 14 and 7 schedule, where they would work 10 days and then be off 5 and then work 10 days and be off 5, whereas now they work 14 days and they're off 7. Uh, they feel like we can eliminate a lot of overtime, which would save uh, a lot of money in the uh, department. So that's one aspect that we're looking at. Um, I know Ms. Newberry uh, mentioned something about electronic tolls for ferries. I've called several different companies and can't get anybody to call me back just because they don't want to. Uh, the cost of setting up their equipment for a thousand cars a day is not worthwhile for them. Um, you, you, they're used to twenty or fifty thousand cars a day. Um, we we cross about a thousand cars a day in Bell Chase. Um, in in Point Lahash, it's well less than that. Um, What's the number? You know it? You got it? I'm sorry? You got the number? Yeah. 314 a day is what the average is in uh, Point Lahash. And 1,000 in Belchase? 931. So we will continue to actively look for ways to uh, the times are the same. decrease the cost. The times are the same for Belchester yeah. and Point Lahash? No, Point no sir. The, the Point Lahash ferry runs two hours less. It starts an hour later in the morning and closes an hour earlier in the evening. But, but those numbers are pre-new courthouse, right? Yeah, well, so the only number I have is partial uh, in August, and the numbers have increased very little in August since the courthouse has been open. The numbers in, in Bell Chase um, have not increased either. In decrease, Mr. Bethalo? <coughs> yeah, back uh, a couple of years ago, they changed the schedule for the Bell Chase Ferry from 12, 12, 15, I think, to 11. So if that was done our 15 minutes or so difference than what it used to be. So that was done within the administration did that. So I'm assuming they didn't want to have the decision on making the, the time the ferry would run. And, but the, the only time thing we have a problem is doing peak hour, peak hour traffics during the bell chase area in the morning and late in the afternoon. That's, that's the issue. The rest of that, we can change schedule. I mean, I don't see problem doing that either. But I don't think you could change it during peak time because of the amount of people that's using that ferry back and forth in the Bell Chase area. But the normally administration made those decisions 
And I didn't want the council to get involved and make decisions. Fine, too. Yeah. All right, Mr. Blank. Just a simple thing, it's more nuts and bolts. Um, when the new ferry landing is created, wherever it may be, um, if, if we do decide to do a Point Lahash ferry landing, um, as opposed to maybe a central location, um, could could that ferry landing be set up to accommodate the Plaquemines Pride without the million plus pounds of water in the bow? At this point, the project is just a conception of, of where it's going to be. It's not anything written in stone. The design engineers, when they come on board with, through DOTD, we need to sit down with them and instruct them what we expect. So the the project is in its infancy. Okay. So the funding that we're trying to utilize to do that, right now all we have is an 80% guarantee that we're going to have uh, funding available. We don't have our 20% yet. I understand. I understand. I just wanted to loop in, you know, in a, in a very public way where I can go back to flag that issue because I understand that the pride was designed in such a way and where it has to have a lot of ballast water in its bow to use the existing ferry landings that we have. And I was just wondering if we could design the new accommodations to handle the equipment that we already own. Thank you. I think that's obvious one. What's that? All right, back to the agenda. Um, I believe we're on item. E. I think that E? Yeah. 9E. An ordinance to amend the 2019 General Fund Operating Expenditure Budget, Maintenance, State and Percy Griffin Center Department, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Bartholomew. Uh, I don't have any place where the money can come from. Uh, recommend, so I suggest the uh, administration to give me an idea where we can get the funding from, and I'll gladly put it in with the budget because I don't. I don't know what where who you like to like to take it from. The simplicity of it to try to defend the funding where you want to get it from. You want to offer for discussion? Open up the discussion. Yeah, we can do that. I offer for discussion. I have a second. second. Thank you, Mr. Kotovich, for discussion. Mr. Lapine. Um, I think you've had this discussion with Direct Epley, and we really don't have a recommendation, Mr. Um, Mr. Bartholomew. We just try, we're trying to find money ourselves. Well, it's up to you. I mean, okay, you, you handle day to day business, not me. Okay, well, so we are. You know, we did court. the air condition last week with Mr. Kindovich, and I was out there in reserve. Yeah, but you got the money. I seen That's three big old air conditioning back here the other day. I came back on the tractor trail, 18 wheel. Oh, what? Three units for the, yeah, three brand new units. Yes, sir. Awesome. Just all need one of those, I think, huh? Yeah. Yeah, y'all can give your tool back there and give me one over there. That, that'll work. That's a lot of money. That, that's a lot of money. Where that money came from? Sandy Recovery Initiative Act. Well, send me some of that. <clears throat> there's, um. <laughs> you going to add that in there? You get it. That, there's but I'm just saying, you know, the issue is this. I'm not, not to cut you off, Mr. Epley. The issue is this. This is a public building. The administration runs this parish, day-to-day -day operation. I'm not there day-to-day -day operation. And I'm asking for guidance, and he said he have no guidance, no recommendation. Well, that mean the East Bank, uh, not the East Bank, but Percy Griffin Center will not have air conditioning at this time. Mr. Bartholomew? Yes. The, the, uh, the, the summer camp fund at yeah, Day Van has about $50,000 in it. No, they, it's not 50. They got less than that. Well, when I looked at it, you mean recreation? Ago. Sorry, recreation. There's a summer camp fund. No, that's not parish funds. It's in the parish budget. Well, take it out of that, yeah. Miss <laughs> Ponds, do they have a fund? I don't know where that's coming from. Are you talking about the grant money? I don't know what he's talking about. Is it? We received that grant money. We operate that grant. I don't know if it's grant money or not. No, it is, it's, 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 it's not a, a grant. Don't confuse it. It's not a grant. We granted it. Yeah. yeah. There's there's a fund that's got fifty thousand dollars. If it's line called, item in it, go get it. Dave Ant, uh, summer camp. You program. have that, Miss Ponds. I don't have a problem doing yeah. that, but I know the money to to run the recreational program has been already picked, been utilized. That's not in our budget. I don't know why it's in there. We still have some additional funding. That's good. So we can take it out of that. 
Yeah, I want to move on to the next one. It's going to take me a minute. To yeah. Look. Um, okay, go ahead. Move on. We'll, we'll draw the second, and we'll uh, defer we'll this. Back. We'll come back later. All right. All right. Next item. That's fine, buddy. 9F, an ordinance to amend the 2019 Firefighting Fund Operating Expenditure Budget Ambulance Department and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Ms. Newbauer. I'll offer as read. Offer next for a second. Second for Mr. Gooey. Uh, Ms. Newbauer. Uh, this is funds that the uh, fire department is in need. They're just transferring from their um, undesignated fund. Uh, Mr. Um, the chief is here if, if, if anybody has any questions. They're in need of this to... Um, uh, they need this amendment to continue to finance their, um, as you can see on the description. Mr. Bartholomew? Yes, I'm very much concerned about that. I have issues because we're trying to build a firehouse on the East Bank for four years now. And we haven't, uh, we was already uh, put into the budget to build it. The money was there. Then we got misdirected and the money was misused, not misused, was placed with the EMS going into the volunteer fire department program. And that money was originally voted on at a tax proposition for fire protection only. But putting the EMS in that program, I think was a violation, but I'm just one. So now we've still been trying to get a firehouse at Woodlawn for the last just like I say, it's five years now. This is the fifth year. I cannot take funding out of that fire department budget and not fund this firehouse, knowing that that is needed, knowing what's the condition of what they have over what we have over there at Woodlawn is terrible, and saying that the money is not allocated. I don't know why it's not allocated to the firehouse. I think that money was allocated to the firehouse. It was just pull out. So that's my concern with that. Uh, I understand they may need the ambulance. I have a problem with that, but it's just hard for me to uh, to deal with that uh, excluding Woodlawn from having a firehouse. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from the table? From the audience? Oh. Our machine's open. And it passes 8-0 with one abstention from District 1. All right, next item, uh, item G. Let me get it. Yeah, I got it. In ordinance to rescind, amend, and set, uh, rescind, null, and set aside ordinance number 15107, which directed the Pockmans Parish Count Civil Service Department to relocate its offices to the Port Suffolk Government Building in Port Suffolk, Louisiana, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Dr. Gooey? Line 10, eliminate at the end of the line where it says once, change that to twice, and I'll offer with that change. All right, so noted. As for a second, I'm Mr. Albro. Uh, Dr. Gu, any questions or comments from the table? You want to make statements? I'm good. Uh, administration may have some comments now or on the next resolution. I'm not sure. I'll leave it up to you. All right. From the audience? I right, with none. Machine is open. This is G, right? Yeah. G. And a resolution passes uh, eight with one abstention from District One Eight Zero One. Uh, next item, please. H. A resolution assigning office space for the Plaquemines Parish Civil Service Department in Building One Hundred at the at the Parish Governmental Complex in Bell Chase, and to provide access to residents of the Lower Parish to the to the pa Plaquemines Parish Civil Service Department on a weekly basis, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Uh, Dr. Gouy. Before offering line 23, at the end of the line where it says once, change that to twice. All right, so noted. With the change, you have a second. Second, second one, Ms. Newbauer. Any questions or comments from the table? <coughs> Go ahead, Mr. Lapine. 
you're going to have to also delete on line 24. It says on the on the uh, on the same on the same day each week. Well, no. Okay, never mind. All right, I'm keep it okay. all, all right, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Blank. Yeah, I, I, I just added add an S as a clerical mistake. I, uh, yeah. That was a typo. Typo, that's right. I, I don't have the line right in front of me, but could lower be struck out and southern be uh, put in its place? Yeah. yeah, let's make that change. Let's remove the second, make those changes. Yeah. All right, those changes have been made. Ms. Newberry seconds with the changes. Seconds. Any questions or comments further from the table? Ms. LaFrance. Do we know exactly what day they're going to be in Post Alpha? <laughs> Is it going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays and Monday, Wednesday and Friday in Bell Chase and Tuesdays and Thursdays in Port Alpha? This, the civil service director is here. I would encourage her to come up and... Um... Good afternoon. Rochelle Lambert, civil service director. Um, we haven't worked out the specifics. Uh, currently, we have two employees in our, my department, so it's pretty uh, tight in our department on how much traffic we're handling in the Bell Chase office. So we'd work that out, but hopefully we can get another administrator in there. We'd be able to determine. We do have testing on certain days when we have openings, and so we would have to also take that into consideration when we look at the days that we could be uh, available to go down to that Port for location. I think that that's, that's very legitimate for uh, our residents to know the two days. Uh, what, the implementation of this policy will be today immediately or is, uh, it's September 2nd. Yeah. September 2nd, uh, pretty much immediately. So uh, we've got till the 2nd and, and we do need to know what two days that would be. So we've got a couple weeks. Absolutely, thank you so much. Right, thank you. Mr. LaFrance, you good? Good. All right. Any other questions or comments from the audience? Ms. Warren Lawrence, just one quick question. Is this uh, done because the mold in the, par in the building was a problem? And I know it's been hung up because of mold, but it, is this going to be the two days they open down there? Is that going to be in the same office that was mold? Mold was a problem, or is it somewhere else in the southern end? Mr. Lapine. No, Mr. Uh, Lawrence, we identified another building that we own, and they're giving them two offices in that building. Okay, so that uh, portion of the building is still full of mold? In that section where their old office was, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, machine is open. Passes um, eight to one. Item. Y'all ready to go back to E? All right, let's go back to E. In ordinance to amend the 2019 General Fund Operating Expenditure Budget, Maintenance, Dave Ant, Percy Griffin Center Department, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Bob, um, you offer, you want to add on? Um, yeah, go ahead uh, and just list out what, what are you adding. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not adding anything. I just looked up the information. That money has been expended. That was the the money that Mr. Epley was speaking of. It is the Dave Ant Summer Recreation Program, and it had 50000 but the money has been. Where'd it go? The project. Mr. Apple, you're over recreation. I mean, that's a recreation program or no? Is is what a recreation program? The fifty grand that was in to sum up camp. I don't I don't know what it is. Volunteer fire department, and that money has been spent. So now, come next year, y'all don't appropriate the money. Don't appropriate it. That's all you got to do, or limit it, whatever you want to do. Do we have any fund in that, in that blood line? I have to look it up. Okay. We don't have any. I'm telling you. All of it. They gave it all to the fire department. I'm trying to take it. I, know what the, I mean, I guess the question is, what did the fire department do with it? 
Well, what you do? What you do this? No, let's, I'm just asking questions. No, wait a minute. Let's do this. Let's <laughs> get the wine. Everybody, we get the two hundred, hundred fifty thousand of wine. Let's get with the hundred fifty thousand to get the seeds to do that. And let's do a forensic audit on all that stuff and see how we benefit the children of Plague the Parish. Do it all. I'm all for that. Absolutely. Everybody. And then you see who's doing what with the money and that all the money we're spending in the service that we're not getting. Great idea, Mr. Jones. Yeah. So, I mean, that, if that's, just stop playing around with it. Do it. Who's playing? <laughs> You've been after it. Do it. Don't play around. Do that. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I agree with that. Mr. Russo. <laughs> I would recommend that the... Uh, Finance department get an allocation of where the funds went and report at the next meeting. That way, for the next budget, we know what we're looking at. I mean, that's all. That's the question behind it. Okay, we will. Last, year before last, they did an audit that was tied into the recommend, uh, of, of the East Bank Recreational Program. That was done. That was turned in. Now, if you want to do it again, it's no problem. We're not. I'm just saying. If, 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 no, go ahead, Ben. I'm just, we're not talking about an audit. We're asking just for a so. distribution list of where the funds went. All right. That's all, and not in the form of a grant, fifty thousand, uh, or alignment of what the fifty thousand was spent on. Is I believe the question. Why don't you do it all. Well, we can do it all. That's what I'm You're not going to just do David and not do the recreation program throughout the whole parish where we give grants to. And matter of fact, we ought to do everything that we give money to, all the different agencies that we give grants to. Then we'd be whole. Put a list together, Mr. John. We got the, uh, I don't know them all, but the you administration knows them all. You can do it. You can yeah, do I think it. let's do that. Let's do I'll that. get them let's all together That's and right. present it to the next council meeting, then we go for it. Sounds good. All right. I get that done. No, you With don't the, have enough money in Highway 15 project. Would I have any? You only have 7700 available. $77? <laughs> I'm just keys. I'm just keys. Look, you want the furthest? Let, let me just say this. We're either going to fix the Day Van Community Center air conditioning or we're not. If we're going to fix it, then we got to hit the unreserved, undesignated fund balance and get this over with, or we're going to abandon the building. So if you don't want to move forward, we'll right, shut the, the building down. Administration's recommendation take it out on reserve. All right. So be it. All right. How are those changes going to read? You want to read the changes on unreserved? It's going to read from general fund, unreserved, undesignated fund balance. That's on item 10? Yes, sir. You offer with the changes, Mr. John? I sure do. Can I get a Adam second? Suggested administration. Second, Mr. Kardovich. You know, we really need to get the root of some of these problems, but I mean, I, I, it's hard for me not to vote for it because I know what's going to happen. If we don't have an air conditioner, then buildings are going to mold and we're going to have issues. So, I mean, it's hard. No, I, John, I, you know, I don't. I, I don't get any money. We don't have any money. use the facility, but you can use the part of it because we have air conditioning now, some of it. But when it goes out, then the program has to stop. So. The question's called. That's all it is. Pass is non-zero. Next item. A resolution authorizing the Plugins Parish community agency to prepare the necessary application to the Louisiana Workforce Commission, receiving the Community Services Block Grant funds for the program year 2020, authorizing the President of Plaquemines Parish Government to sign and submit said application and contract and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I'll offer for a second. Second. Second, Ms. Newbauer. Uh, any explanation on uh, this is community action? It's a yearly thing, I think. That's a yearly thing. All right, any questions or comments from the table on this? The audience. All right, with none, the machine is open. And passes nine zero item uh, L. I'm sorry, that was uh, was that J? Yeah, that we're on L now. Nine what, what do you want? What do you want? Nine J. 
Aye, Jack. A resolution authorizing the Plaquemines Parish Community Action Agency to prepare the necessary application to the Louisiana Housing Corporation for a grant to provide utility assistance to the residents of Plaquemines Parish for the fiscal year 2020 and authorizing the president of the Plaquemines Parish government to sign and submit said application and contract and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I'll offer an answer a second. Mr. Arbor seconds. Any questions or comments from the table? From the audience? All right, with none on Jay. Passes 9-0. Kay, please. A resolution authorizing the Plaquemines Parish Community Action Agency to prepare and file an application with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development on behalf of the Plaquemines Parish Government for a grant under 49 CFR 5311 formula grant in rural areas and or 49 CFR 5339 grants for bus and bus facility program as amended to provide public rural transportation to the residents of Plaquemines Parish and further authorizing Plaquemines Parish President to execute and file with such application and assurance or any other documents required. All right, I'll offer an extra second. Mr. Arbor seconds. Any questions or comments from the table? From the audience? All right, with none, machines open on K. Passes 9-0. Item L, please. An ordinance to amend the 2019 Manpower Structure and Operating Expenditure Budget, General Fund, Courthouse Security Department, and other bus profile with respect thereto. I'll offer and ask for a second. Just all those seconds. This is basically funding approximately um, $13,000 for the remainder or $14,000 for the remainder of the year for uh, courthouse security. It's going to add an additional person to supplement Ms. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Robin Thomas uh, at the uh, Point of Lash Courthouse. Any questions or comments from the table? From the audience? Aye, with none. That passes 9 0. Uh, Mr. Lapine, who, who's that going to report to? Do you know? Job decide? Administration? All right, thanks. Um, item 10A1. A resolution creating policy to receive and process all public requests, complaints, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Bartholomew? Deferred. All right, that's deferred. Withdrawn. All right, withdrawn. 10 is withdrawn. I introduced. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. All right. Did you want to go back to introduction? Do you have something else? All right, go back to item five. Introdu well, whatever item introductions are. All right, good, Mr. Bartholomew. An ordinance to amend the 2019 General Fund Manpower Structure Civil Service Department, otherwise to provide respect there, too. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll go back to um, 10B, District 1 update. You back up, Mr. Bartholomew. 10, uh, District 1 deferred. update. District 1 update is deferred. Yes. Uh, C is deferred. Uh, Mr. LaFrance. Deferred. Uh, D is deferred. Um, item F, F1. Uh, Mr. Blink. Is anybody in the audience here from Jesuit Bend who wants to talk about drainage? All right, defer. All right, that's deferred. Uh, District 6 update. Ms. Uh, Newberry. I'm just going to put on public record that I talked to Mr. Spears today, and um, we were supposed to have those lily, lily problems we had in the uh, back drainage canal fixed, but with the uh, machine being broken with heavy equipment. Um, so now that is been fixed from what I understand I think is that right Mr. Beschel and they're going to start working um, in Oakville instead of from the south they're going to start working from the north and work their way down so anyone with lily problems on the north end of the canal you will start to see some kind of progress of course the rain has a lot to do with it too so if it's raining of course we can't do the job so and that's been a big complication too but we are um, we are trying to get the job done that's it all right thank you Mr. Newberry item 11 Approval of the minutes from the August 8, 2019 meeting. Uh, Mr. LaFrance offers. Ask for a second. Second, Mr. Bartholomew. Questions or comments? With none, machine's open. Thank you, Mr. Al Mr. Albro offers an adjournment. Second by Mr. Bartholomew. Any questions or comments? Machine's open on the adjournment. Passes 9-0, meeting is adjourned at 3.50.